Welcome back to Northern Perspective, everyone. I'm Cypher. And I'm Fox. So, uh, wow, today was an interesting committee. Um, we haven't watched it, but I was keeping track of how long it went, and the final runtime was, I believe, 4 hours and 27 minutes. And Fox and I were talking about this earlier, and we were actually really concerned because that would have made for potentially a six hour live stream and even the most committed people Cy uh, cypher and fox <laughs> uh would not be staying for the whole entirety of the live stream no we probably would have fallen asleep <laughs> so um what what i did do is i did grab it and take a look and see why it was so long and i did see that there was two main motions that were proposed and there was some filibustering going on so what i ended up doing is i removed the two motions the first one by uh, Souza and the second one by Janice. that way it actually cut down the entire testimony to two hours and 27 minutes so this should be uh, much more manageable for us um, i will try and summarize the motion as best as I can. And if there's anything that I miss, because again, I didn't watch the entire two hours of debate in the motion. Uh, uh, anybody that did feel free to pipe in and, uh, and you know, hit any you know, major things that I missed. But um, what we decided to do is just focus all of it on Darren Anthony's testimony. That way we could get through it, hopefully by 12, 1230. Uh, Fox? Yeah, so as this is going to be a, uh, a three and a half, possibly four hour live stream, um, unfortunately, we won't be able to address general questions in the chat. However, Barnaby will be in the chat uh, momentarily, um, so you can bounce your ideas off of him. Um, we will be addressing super chats. And uh, the rules for the chat, please respect each other and the platform. No selling, soliciting, or spamming, and do not use unparliamentary language. Because we do have uh, a lot of parents around here that are trying to get their children involved, uh, their, their teenagers, to get them to know about politics and what is going on within their government. And it's really, really amazing to see. Um, I was not pulled into that when I was a, a young lad, and I'm sure many of you were not as well. So uh, here we go. And um, uh, for those of you on the stream... Uh, Two of the MPs have been revealed, Stephanie Cousy and Kelly Block. The final MP will be revealed tomorrow. Um, so keep your eyes on either Twitter or our Facebook or the community page of YouTube to see when or who it actually is going to be. Now, uh, before we get into anything else, there was some generous donations and membership uh, joins before so we're just gonna get through those quickly and then we can get right into it so we have barn digital 5w we have Betty Lufa Cass awakening Elizabeth Hart uh, Eve Dejeuner Bruce McDonald Nick Richard and Bernard McCoy all uh, either renewing or joining uh, Northern perspective as members so thank you very much for that some pre stream super chats Bonnie Gunn with a $10 super chat and a $2 super chat thank you very much for that thank you Bonnie uh, Pat Hollingworth joining uh, as MP uh, supporter thank you very much and welcome Pat and Jerry Savoy with a $10 super chat uh, sorry, Northern Perspective community can't uh, make it tonight. Been a really busy week at my work. Only thing I ask for everyone, uh, Northern Perspective community, is keep the likes up. Jester and Barnaby counting on you to keep the likes up. Yes, absolutely. And sorry you can't join us, Jerry, but uh, I'm sure you're watching us tomorrow, rather for you as today. Janet Thompson, welcome to uh, NP Supporter. Thank you very much. And Gibbs Salisbury with a 279 Super Chat. I think Firth was far more honest than this guy. Oh, that's going to be something. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, and Pandemonium with a 2 large Super Chat. Hit that like button. Like it owes you money. You mean like Trudeau. Um, <laughs> Leo Orchard with a 2 large Super Chat. It's a bloody clown show today. Well, you know, we'll get oh, it the boy. ringmaster. That's what we keep hearing, so we're pretty excited. Like Cypher ran through just to see who was talking and, and kind of where the motions were and where the breaks were to, to get it out of the video that we're going to watch. But we um, didn't hear anything. Yeah. Yeah, it's, we're pretty much going in blind. He just took out the fluff. 
Um, ironically, when I was clicking around, I saw one frozen screenshot of Brock, and he looked like he was about to have a conniption, so I'm kind of curious as to what that's <laughs> about, but we'll see. Uh, maybe I just landed on a wrong frame. I don't know. But uh, Daniel with a $7 super chat took a peek with three MPs, and oh my God, prepare to play the what do you meme often, and <laughs> and Cypher needs to secure his glasses. Okay, and Sabotage KCCO with a $2 super chat. Get the likes up. Yes, indeed. We're at 923 viewers, 541 likes, and if there are many, any members of Parliament watching, welcome to the Northern Perspective live stream as we cover the continued coverage of the Arrive Scam app, brought to you by the mighty Ogo, the only committee that matters. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, oh, one last minute chat. Rhiannon Gadsden with a $7 super chat. Today had some doozies. Can't wait to hear your reactions, and uh, well, uh, I'm glad I came prepared because we do have one new meme that was requested yesterday and I'll let you see it when it's appropriate. So let's do it. Let's get into it. With a gavel and all. Welcome to meeting 109 of the House of Commons Standing Committee on Government Operations and Estimates pursuant to Standing Order 1083C. To the motion adopted by the committee on Monday, October 17, 2022, the committee is meeting to consider matters related to the Arrive Can application. As always, a reminder not to have your headphones next to the microphone. That's because of feedback and potential injury to our very valued interpreters. Um, just uh, quickly before we start, uh, like yesterday, um, Mr. Anthony's uh, lawyer, Mr. Ben Timmons, will be uh, present with his client, but he is not a witness and thus he may not address the committee. Uh, the council may be on Zoom call with the, witness or with the witness and they may speak directly to their clients, but not to the committee or committee members. I would note for committee members that they should only question the witness and not speak to or ask questions of the lawyer who is not appearing as a witness. Mr. Anthony, if you do require uh, time to speak to uh, your lawyer, uh, keep your camera on, but just uh, mute yourself and you can just indicate that you'll be conferring with them. That's fine. Um, my intent, like yesterday, uh, we will do a 10 minute uh, suspension after the first two rounds, one hour about. And then after that, after the second hour, we will do five minute uh, suspension. And also my intent as of yesterday is to have our clerk swear in the witness if committee is fine with that. And we'll have our Clerk, go ahead with that. Great, uh, Mr. Anthony, uh, email this morning. Uh, you have the choice between either a oath or solemn affirmation. Uh, please let me know which one you'd like to proceed with. An oath, please. Great, I'll, uh, I'll read the, uh, the text to you, sir, and you may respond. Do you swear that the evidence you shall give on this examination shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. Thank you, sir. Uh, yes, Mr. Barrett, is uh, there something or? Yes, sir, uh, before, uh, before we proceed, um, yesterday at the end of the meeting, uh, it was clear that there was an undertaking by the witness to provide documents before 9 a.m. this morning. Um, Mr. Firth had committed to provide us names of who he negotiated with CBSA to write his own contract and the names of government officials who provided the glowing endorsements on his website that he had first undertaken to provide the committee 16 months ago. Uh, I'm wondering if you can update the committee on uh, on what's been received and when that'll be circulated. Uh, yes, I've received uh, maybe about one third, 25% of the promise information. The clerk has received it. It is going to translation. So hopefully uh, perhaps more the day after the balance of the information promised uh, by 9 a.m. has not. We have a promise from Mr. Firth that the balance will be sent at another e or separate email, but we haven't released or received it yet. When we do, um, it will be translated and forwarded to the committee. Uh oh, SpaghettiOs. So um, that's contempt of Parliament potentially, is it not? Yeah, and, and it could also be interpreted as a lie. <laughs> Because when you promise to do something and then don't, when you're under oath, when you're under no oath, less. when you're under oath, it could be construed as committing perjury. So, but um, I'm pretty sure nobody is surprised in this chat, and nobody is surprised that's watching it, unless you're watching it, Mr. Firth. In which case, well, you're probably not surprised either. So um, there we are. Anyway, uh, 
let's uh, get through some of these uh, uh, chats before we can move on. Just me, Nicole, member for two months. Let's go hit the like. Absolutely. We're about uh, 500 likes behind everybody. So let's get that up because remember, the more likes we had yesterday, the more viewers we ended up getting, which means more Canadians can be notified of the stream, which means more people are informed of what is going on in this government. And then more Canadians that'll help us take Trudeau down. Absolutely. Brian Letwinak with a $10 super chat. Nice to see you. Hope you don't have one of those veins by your temple because it's going to pop out tonight. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Heart singer with a $5 super chat. Super thankful for this community. You all make me believe Canada can be saved. Let me correct you heart singer canada will be saved because um the tide all, has turned and we're all gonna do it together the tide has turned uh humble tracker with a ten dollar super chat my doctor uh because i'm a weak arse <laughs> biatch said to take it easy and not cause stress or anxiety blah 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 so much bs said in little progress so of course <laughs> what what would better way to lower your stress than to watch committee meeting with northern perspective right humble tracker <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Cap Shenanigans with a $5 super chat. This is a good time. These two dudes are Pinky and the Brain. I'll let you guys figure out who is who. Oh, Firth is definitely Pinky. <laughs> and Josh with a $2 super chat. I am shocked. Shocked! Well, not that shocked. Yes, a Futurama <laughs> quote. I love yeah. it. Okay. Let the, uh, let, the, let the beatings begin. And actually, on that point, I want to bring up just something I promised to get back to uh, the committee yesterday. It was regarding um, just um, questions put toward uh, the previous witness that were not answered. I want to read just kind of a note directly from um, our law clerk. Um, quote, I understand one of the reasons given by the witness for not providing certain answers was that the matter was potentially related to an RCMP investigation. It is up to the committee to decide whether a question should be put to the witness and whether the potential for an actual police investigation is sufficient reason for not answering the question. Uh, it's ultimately up to the committee to decide. As mentioned in the House of Commons procedure and practice, a committee can report to the House a situation where a witness refuses to answer its question. So basically, it is up to the committee to decide whether that is a relevant reason not to answer and not for anyone else. Oh, he's so, screwed. So just chair on that, uh, if I may. Um, so information that was asked to the witness yesterday, um, you know, the the uh, for example, the the testimonials. Um, who provided those testimonials? Are you able to tell us if that information has been furnished? Uh, uh, even if you can't circulate it. No, I can't provide this specific information because it hasn't been translated yet. So you're not able to tell us who was at the table. Let me double when check with the clerk. But I don't think GC it. Strategies negotiated their own contract. You can't. Yeah, because names don't get translated. So yeah, I can't release specifics. Just oh. probably about seventy-five percent of it has not been received yet. Understood. Okay. Uh, we are going to go ahead. If you're finished, Mr. Barrett, Mr. Anthony, I will give you the floor for about five minutes for your opening statement, please, sir. Go ahead. This is my second time before the committee, and as you are aware, I've been compelled to testify here today. However, I have always been willing to answer questions from the committee. I understand I have been called to appear to answer questions pertaining to the Arrive Can study. I will answer all questions for which I have the knowledge to answer as best I can. Please understand that my inability to respond should not be misinterpreted as me not answering the question. I was simply not involved in our federal government contracting processes with Canada Border Services, Canadian Digital Services, Public Health Agency, or Public Health Canada. I have no contacts or relationships within those departments. Wait a minute. Um... What? That doesn't sound right. Okay. So let me get this straight. You have a company which is made up of two people. And the entire business model of that company is to do business with the federal government. Okay. We're all in agreement on that, considering the name of the company is Government of Canada Strategies. And they purchased this company for the sole purpose of actually doing business with the federal government. And in that two-person company, 
this guy is saying he has no knowledge of any contracts to do with the federal government. So that means that Christian Firth did 100% of the work? Because there's nothing left. What did you handle? Quote, unquote, payroll for GC strategies? Meaning you and Christian? <laughs> You, you divided up the two and a half million dollars that you received. Okay, this is going to take me a while to sort out. Uh, one for you, one for me, one for you, one for me. What? Like, this is, this is ridiculous. Out of the gate. We're not even a minute in. Holy crap. Okay. And he's in the same place. If you notice, the painting's exactly the same as Christian Firth. Same lawyer. Yeah. Oh, so it is the lawyer's office, presumably. Yeah, yeah, it would be the lawyer's office because uh, if you recall yesterday, Christian was saying, well, you know, I want to get home, right? So no doubt he was in his lawyer's office and... Uh, um, Same lawyer. Interesting. Well, it would be the lawyer for GC Strategies, right? So Yeah, I guess that's true. Uh, that that part isn't surprising. Uh, maybe maybe they get a 50% discount since they're both clients. <laughs> Diane Sylvain with a $10 super chat. I only watch clips. We have the same picture. Do not get distracted. LOL. Uh, weird they have the same lawyer. That could be a conflict if they are charged especially. Oh, interesting. Okay, so maybe I'm mistaken on that. Thank you very much, Diane. Uh, T-Bear with a $5 super chat. Do you think there's going to be a springtime election or will Trudeau try to hang until next year? Um, Trudeau <sighs> is going to try to hang in as long as he can. However, it's not up to him. Yeah. It's up to the opposition parties because they outnumber the liberals. Absolutely. So right now it all hinges on what Jagmeet wants to do because it seems like the NDP, or sorry, the uh, the bloc and obviously the conservatives are on board for an election. Yeah. Humble Tracker with a $50 super chat laying her tip down early. This is for Barnaby from Northern Perspective because he agreed to serve me before the bar opens. Very <laughs> Barnaby nice. from Northern Perspective, down payment for you to get a ball of angel envy. There you go, Barnaby. Uh... Treat the lady well. <laughs> Leo Orchard with a $2 super chat. And it just gets worse. And just me to call with a $10 super chat. Smash the light, guys, so that Barnaby from a Northern Perspective can open the bar. I think we all need a drink tonight by the sounds of it. And Daniel with a $279 uh, super chat. This is a next level of stupidity. Rob Blaine with a $5 super chat. If I wore glasses, I'd have chucked him by now. And the <laughs> real party hasn't even started. Okay. We're still about 500 likes behind, but at least the percentage has uh, increased, everybody. So let's keep those likes going we're at 847 and 1300 concurrent viewers uh off we go let's hear more of it mr anthony i have no contact with any clients involved with those departments or contracts other than security for resources this has been a difficult time for me and my company my family has also had our personal privacy invaded with images sorry, images and the address of our home published across the media. We have been suspended from all government contracts and our subcontractors are not able to work under these existing contracts. <laughs> My private sector work has dwindled to nothing. This will have an irreparable impact on me and my family's futures. A career I spent 20 years building has been ruined. Aside from the obvious reasons of not wanting to be isolated from one another during our testimony, it's also true that we requested to be in testimony together as Mr. Firth handled all projects related to COVID and pandemic response. So I have very little to offer as insight into this committee's current work. I was not involved in any of the contracting processes for the projects. My involvement is limited to acting as chief security officer. As CSO, I was responsible for working with resources to obtain required documentation to file their security clearances. This includes getting their fingerprinting and document control numbers completed, setting up each of the resources portals in the OLIS system and helping them through the process to have their background history checked on. So, okay, getting people fingerprinted, you know what that involves? Picking up a phone, dialing the, la the, the, the local, you know, um, core commissioners or, or, or RCMP or, or police station, making an appointment. 
Actually, no. <laughs> it's not even that. The person has to do that. You just say, all right, go and get your fingerprints done. Yeah, here's like the waiver or whatever so that you don't have to pay for it. Oh, I, I'm sure they even made them pay for oh, it. Oh, probably. So, and then you email documents. Congratulations. You and Firth did virtually no work for the last almost 10 years and got paid millions of dollars to do it. Nobody has any sympathy for you because that's all taxpayer money. Stephen uh, Poirier with a $20 Super Chat. Hi, Cypher and Fox. I watch you guys religiously. Thank you so much for everything you do. Canada needs more people like you. Keep up the great work. The more you do, the more informed Canadians become. Again, thank you. and Thank you, Stephen. Thank you very much for those comments. I, I, they mean as much now as they did you know, a year ago, and they will continue to mean it as much of that. This is literally why we do it. So thank you very, very much. And Bones with a member comment for um, one month. Cypher needs <laughs> nerf glasses. They'll bounce around. <laughs> Not to my knowledge, <laughs> Anthony. Yeah. And then uh, Jarsha with a $2 super chat. I offer the world's tiniest violin for Firth and Anthony. Um, I think that's still too large. And uh, Kate Bradley Mason with a $2 super chat. Chat flying by so fast I can't keep up. Love it. <laughs> yeah, uh, I guess that's the, the problem when you have so many people in chat. Well, and we have been questioned in the past if we can turn on the slow chat. Um, because we have so many members, members. Um, the members like supersede the the slow chat so members can still write as many messages as fast as they want um so we have tried it in the past and it didn't really make a difference so that's why we don't turn on the slow chat in case anyone's wondering yeah and that's because 90 percent of the people in chat are members so <laughs> there you go and shane member for one month is it just me or does this guy talk like he is on volume can uh, can we watch the replay at two times speed yeah. uh no <laughs> once submitted i would verify the information and submit it for each successful security uh, security clearance, I would receive a briefing form, which I would pass along to the resource and notify Mr. Firth, confirming their eligibility for work. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. We'll start with uh, Mr. Barrett, please, for six minutes. Go ahead, Mr. Barrett. Oh, so they're going easy on him. Sir, I see that you're in the same uh, lawyers boardroom as your partner was yesterday you're with the same legal counsel is that correct correct are you uh, able to ask your lawyer at what time mr. Firth will fulfill his promise to this committee to have tabled 100% of the information that. that we requested by 9 a.m. a time that he agreed to I don't think he's allowed to do that because it's technically directing a question to the lawyer I don't yeah, think he's allowed to do that's that that's a good point we'll find out can you, can you tell us, uh, maybe confer with your lawyer and get us that answer? I'm not going to discuss my discussions with my lawyer. At what time will the information that has been requested by a partner of your company be furnished to this committee? So he's like, fine, I I'll won't ask, ask your it. lawyer, I'll ask you. Yeah, I'll ask it a different way. Yeah. yeah. Barrett could be a lawyer. I'm, I'm not aware. I, I don't know. You, you don't know. Well, some of that information was requested uh, 16 months ago, and there was an undertaking made then. And yesterday, I told your partner I didn't believe him that he would provide it this morning, and... Uh, and he said that yes. that, that was, uh, um, you know, of course he provided, that wasn't the case, uh, but he proved me uh, right. Um, your partner yesterday um, also said that everybody was lying, except for him and you. Said that the Auditor General was lying, the Procurement Ombudsman, the Globe and Mail, the National Post, even the CBC, um, Global News, all of us. So he offered no proof to that effect. And while we did offer proof that he lied to this committee, like I just did, uh, when uh, in, in terms of proof uh, by your partner not having furnished this committee with the evidence that, that he undertook to by 9 a.m., um, do you agree with Mr. Firth that the Auditor General's report is incorrect? I would re refer to his testimony in regards to the numbers that we were able to supply to the Auditor General. So was the Auditor General's report correct or incorrect in your assessment? Incorrect. So the Auditor General of Canada is wrong 
and you are right. That's your contention today. Yes. What? If you had the opportunity to see the testimony of your partner yesterday, you'd see why I find that incredibly hard to believe. Um, because, uh, you know, frankly, um, it hasn't been uh, credible, your, your uh, company's testimony to our committee. Last week, government officials announced that files concerning your company, GC Strategies, role and involvement in Justin Trudeau's $60 million arrive scam have been sent to the RCMP. Now, you've said that your role is a security expert for the company. Um, which information do you think was sent to the RCMP? Would it be information about uh, forged resumes by your company, uh, involvement <laughs> in uh, bait and switch procurement, uh, as outlined by the procurement ombudsman, um, or uh, bid rigging? Which, what's the information that you believe has been forwarded to the RCMP? Okay. <laughs> wow, Barrett's on fire. So this is a question that's impossible for the guy to answer. All this question, its intent is to uh, disturb Intimidate. the calm. Yeah, it's it's not meant to be answered. It's just meant to intimidate and, and upset. Yeah, it, it's meant to rattle him uh, out of the gate. You know, this isn't and, and to let him know this is not going to get easier. This is as easy as your day is going to get. So it's it's interesting that he's asking him this. And, and the answer is going to be, well, how am I supposed to know? You know, I can't answer that, that sort of thing. But he's laying it out that um, we don't believe anything that either of you say at all. So so get ready is basically what he's saying. Um, uh, bingo Bango with a $5 super chat. Can we talk about how Fox's avatar is basically Professor X from the end of uh, the 90s cartoon intro from X-Men? Sure. <laughs> you can talk about I, it. I didn't realize Professor X was a blonde with glasses. There you go. <laughs> yeah, he actually didn't have any, any hair at all, but it's it's the chair, I think, and he and it looks like you're doing the whole telepathy oh. thing with your fingers, I guess. Um, Sloppy Sleuth with a 279 Super Chat. Wonder if Cypher will laugh, cry, or other tonight. Probably all the above. The dude with a $2 Super Chat did <laughs> did it at least clean the toilet, right? Uh, Nilik with a $5 Super Chat. Ding dong, hit that like and share, folks. They might be laundry wondering op if that's the name they chose uh to change it to after they bought it oh, there you go uh leslie with a two dollar super chat hi cypher and fox i got my friend watching her in perspective excellent that's awesome thank you very much and hello to leslie robin's friend travis foster with a five dollar super chat get them lights up people love you guys for everything you do it makes my shift go by so much better well from what we've heard, this, this live this stream is going to be not. a good one, yeah. <laughs> um, and we're still 600 likes behind, folks. Let's get those likes up, please. It helps YouTube suggest this video out to more people. Either people that watch Northern Perspective and haven't been notified, or people that haven't watched Northern Perspective, but maybe they've heard about us on Twitter. Uh, Anthony1974, member for one month. Good evening, Cypher and Fox. Got my popcorn ready for round two. Excellent. Awesome. I'm jealous I can't eat popcorn because that would destroy all of your ears. Here we go. Um, I have no idea. Your partner, Mr. Firth, refused to say who provided testimonials on your website 16 months ago and uh, has failed to provide them this morning. Uh, is your testimony this morning that you are also unaware who provided the testimonials on your website? Yes, it is. Yes, I am unaware of who provided the testimonies. So, so you don't know who the chief information officer was of Canada who, who provided, there's, there's only six quotes on your website and you're saying that you don't know who the chief data officer for the public sector was who provided that. Yes, that's correct. You're saying you don't know who the chief data officer for Canada was who provided a, an endorsement of your company on your website. Yes, that's correct. You're saying that the vice president of a major crown corporation, who that individual is, is a mystery to you. That's correct. This is interesting the way Barrett is asking these, because each of these is an instance of perjury coming. And it's interesting that he's answering that's correct instead of, I don't recall. Usually, if someone's trying to get out of a perjury charge, they'll say, I don't recall. Because you can't really prove that somebody doesn't recall or doesn't remember something. But when they're answering definitely like this, um, 
that could potentially be perjury. The only issue with it is the way Barrett is framing the question is you're saying you don't know. So how do you prove somebody knows and doesn't know something? Um, but you know, it's, it, it's all around reasonable doubt, right? Because you're the only two people in this company. These are testimonials on there. So who authorized them to go up there? Don't tell me you don't know who these people are. Um, Cast Awakening with a $2 super chat. Uh, two words to describe Darren Anthony. Sock puppet. Yeah, I think that's insulting all sock puppets, but uh, I take your point. Hummel Tracker with a $10 super chat. Remember to hit the doorbell as you walk in. 1,500 likes equals free subs. Ding dong, ding dong. There you go. So if we hit 1,500 uh, likes, everybody, Humble Tracker is going to drop some free memberships for everybody. Uh, so get to 1,500, you have 368 to go. And the senior executive from the government of Canada, you don't know who that was. That's correct. So though your partner appeared at this committee 16 months ago and was asked that very same question, it didn't, it didn't raise any curiosity in you and it never came up in conversation. Will you say today that you never discussed that committee appearance and the questions that were asked with your partner? Is that your testimony today under oath? Can, can you clarify the question on, on what? The, you should actually clarify the question for me. The question is, when your partner came here 16 months ago and was asked that question and said he was going to come back and provide the information to the committee, and appeared before a parliamentary committee, uh, and um, I would say it didn't go very well, um, is your testimony today that you and he didn't discuss the information that he said he was going to provide back to the committee? We discuss files and contracts generally, but not specifics. Are the, are the endorsements on your website fake, like the resumes? that were provided in order to win government contracts? <laughs> this is gonna be this is gonna be an interesting answer. Yeah, is this guy gonna go to the point of absurdity or Well what's he gonna say? He's gonna yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if they're fake. Which means they could be. Well and this is the thing. Now that's a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Now that's now you can actually look at fraud based on False advertising. I have no idea. I have no <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, come on! <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> what? Oh my gosh. Emma just getting started. What is going on? <laughs> look at the look on Barrett's face. I think that's how we feel right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly how we feel right now um okay ladies and gentlemen we have found the hill we have found the gravesite. we have found the funeral this is the place where darren anthony is going to die on is this hill oh man here we go it's going to be nothing but absurd answers for the next two hours here we go <laughs> Oh, oh my god. <laughs> I was like I was like he's probably going to say this. There's no way he's going to say it. Oh my goodness, he actually said it. And please hit that like button for us, folks. 300 likes to go and you get some free memberships everybody. Here we go. Joe Higgins with a member comment for uh one month. Thank you very much. Hit the like button. I wonder if he watched or they got the same legal team. No, they they it's the same lawyer. It's the same lawyer. And Mike Bamlett with a $5 super chat. All right, someone has to say it. Mr. Anthony is about as sharp as a marshmallow. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one and the excalibur 45 with the seven dollar super chat they're an it company that does no it of course he doesn't know how how those got on the website and they magically appeared uh and louise a king with a five dollar super chat thank you very much i'm sorry i'm trying to be nice here but this guy has fallen out of the stupid tree and hit every branch on the way down it seems like it and bubble avenue with a seven dollar super chat don't know how many times i shouted get out <laughs> on my screen this morning <laughs> you need an elaine baines from seinfeld mean <laughs> thanks for all you do love you thank you so much okay uh <laughs> nilik with a two dollar super chat come on bows we are gathered here today <laughs> that's right 
It seems, sir, that this is just part of the scam that's being perpetrated by your company on the government of Canada and Canadian taxpayers. We'll have more questions for you. Thank you, Mr. Barrett. Mr. Souza, please go ahead for six minutes, sir. Thank you, Chair. Um, Mr. Anthony, have, have you been approached by any members of this committee <laughs> before all of this? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Oh, and he's already beat red. Oh, like. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I have a feeling I'm going to be saying that a lot tonight. I need Cooper. <laughs> what the hell is going on? <laughs> this is just, this is a circus. This is a complete circus. Oh, like, Sousa, um, it's pretty obvious that the questions and answers to the witness are not conservative friendly. If you're implying that the conservatives, hey, talked to him before and said, hey, Darren, um, we're going to ask you some questions. Just be as stupid as you possibly can. <laughs> it's going to be in your best interest to look as, as slimy and as corrupt and as dishonest as possible. Okay, so here's all the questions. Just, just act really, really stupid and it's going to go fine. Yeah, I don't think so. No, I don't think so at all. Uh, anyway. Make sure we're not missing anything, which I am. Rod Blaine with a $5 super chat. You two and your team are so humble. It's the community uh, here that is in your debt uh, for the work Northern Perspective puts in. Oh, thank uh, you. Don't be saying that stuff because you're going to get us all emotional. We're really, really tired. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you very much, Rob. And Shane with a $2 super chat. Barrett is about to bring back crucifixion. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, you guys are too much. Oh, we have so much fun with this community. Thank you very much. And then Daniel with a $2.79 super chat. Uh, dumb and dumber. That's right. And welcome Pamela Leia Rowway to NP Supporter. Thank you very much for joining. Here we go. And we're 214 likes away from some free memberships all. And with every like, you're jacking up the viewers. Let's keep it going. Or any other committee within any elected officials. Has everybody approached you or Christian Firth separately outside of committee? No, they have not. And in your discussions uh, and deliberations since this investigation has been ongoing, have you had discussions with the Auditor General? No, I have not. Have you had discussions with the Ombudsman? No, I have not. Have you had any discussions with uh, uh, the ministers or members of uh, uh, of cabinet on this matter? I'm going to have to go back and look at the testimony yesterday, but I remember Christian Firth responding to the question of, dis have you had any discussions with the Auditor General? As Yes, we have. Yeah, I thought he said yes as well. No, you guys let us know in the chat if you remember. We're a little sleep deprived tonight. Well, so. the yes isn't the key thing. It's the we. Because there's oh. only two people in GC Strategies. I, I suppose he could have been referring to himself and his lawyer, though. Possibly. Possibly. Anyway, um, let's just uh, get through these. Uh, we have Jarcha with a $5 super chat. Uh, sous vide Sousa needs to turn down the temperature down. <laughs> Medium <laughs> rare was 12 committee meetings ago, and his brain hasn't caught us since then. <laughs> yeah, he's getting to medium well to well down at this point. I think so. And Bingo Bango with a $2 super chat. He seems resigned to his fate. He's in trouble. Yeah, and he's just riding it out, I guess. Not at all. In your deliberations and in, and in your uh, processes over the years, you've been how, how long have you been part of GC Strategies? Uh, um, I've been there since 2015 when we started the company. Were you a partner in previous companies and operations with, uh, with uh, this procurement process? I worked for previous companies, but I was not partners in those companies. Who did you work for prior to GC Strategies? IT4 I worked for Veritac and a company called I4C Consulting. I4C. That's right. So you worked with Christian Firth at Veritac? That's where right. I met him, yes. Yeah. And then you both together became partners and purchased Cordell? Yes, I left Veritech around 2010, went to a different company, and then we met up again in 2015. So you have an equity stake in GC Strategies? Absolutely. So you're, you're a, a principal, just you and, and Kirsten Firth? 
is GC that's, Strategies. That's correct. Um, and yet you have not been involved in sourcing contracts. It's all been Christian Further. Have you been engaged in sourcing opportunities? I'm engaged in, sor in sourcing opportunities. I work in the private sector and different federal government accounts. We don't work in the same, same accounts. So you have separate accounts than Christian Firth? Yes. Are you saying that when the contracts were uh, established for Arrive Can and, and so forth, you weren't part of those discussions? I was not part of those discussions. But you are the chief security officer, so it is part of your responsibility to vet the subcontractors, as I, I understand. Is that what, yes, what you're saying? That, yes, that's correct. So any, any resource that worked under those contracts I would have processed their security clearances. So you know things are getting bad when even Souza is getting confused. At, at, and, and he's like, well, wait a minute, I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, when he's getting very strange quest, uh, answers to the questions that he's asking, like he, Darren Anthony didn't know about these contracts. Well, and he's kind of, I think he's intending on giving him softball questions, but he's like, Anthony's whiffing on them. And because of that, then he has to ask a follow-up question that kind of incriminates, I don't want to say incriminate, but it puts Anthony in a problematic position because he's like, no, you know, we work on separate accounts. Okay, but you're the chief security officer. Yeah. So you never worked on RIPCAN. No, but you're the chief security officer, so you handle all the resources, including RIPCAN. Yeah. I don't know. I just don't buy it. In a company that's only two people, how can you not know what the other person is doing? Oh, right? Right? Like you might as well just have your own company then, and 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 you're working solo. This is this is absolutely unbelievable, and not not in amazement. It's just it's not believable in terms of dishonesty. But it seems like Anthony's trying to throw Firth under the bus, and I mean, I guess that's the advantage he has to going second. But I guess, uh, I, guess. I wonder what's going to happen. Dave Thompson with a 279 Super Chat. Wow, he just said I have no idea. Drink time. <laughs> uh, Steve Hunter with a $5 Super Chat. Uh, GC Strategy stands for Government Corruption Strategies. Uh, Pat Hollingworth with a 279 Super Chat. Thank you, Pat. And Nux for Cup. Good to see you again. $2 Super Chat. What is it that you do? You no. should let Janice read that one. Yeah, there you go. What is it that you do? No. <laughs> Uh, Sabotage KCCO with a $2 super chat. What is it? Oh, there you go. Well, here's the office space one. <laughs> what would you say you do here? <laughs> <laughs> that one never gets old for me. Um, anyway, so there we are. And we are 132 likes away from free uh, memberships, everybody. And we're at 1,800 subscribers. Jack those likes up. Ring the doorbell. Bump, pound the drum. Whatever you want to do. And Steve Poirier, welcome to NP Supporter. Thank you very much. So in order for them to be eligible to work on these contracts, they had to go through you. Correct. So did you have contact with individuals uh, in government in regards to these contracts? No. In terms of your security clearance? No, I just had, just had contacts with the resources. So who are the resources in government that you would have had contact with? Oh, I, I didn't have contacts within the government for their resources when i say resources i mean our contractors so you you're you're you have a contract christian firth is source a contract in government and a substantive one at that and your involvement was hey we just make sure that subcontractors are eligible is that what you're saying that's and exactly you, what i'm saying and you had no engagement with <laughs> civil service at all not with those contracts, no. Oh, come on! He just keeps <laughs> digging a deeper and deeper hole. Uh, not possible, people. <laughs> You're telling me you guys have landed the biggest contracts in your company's history, and you're just like, no, it's fine. Yeah, and the left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing? Yeah. I don't think so. I, I, I don't know. Give me a break. Uh, Leo Orchard with a two dollar seventy or two dollar super chat. If Monty Python ran a parliamentary committee, well, at least it would be entertaining. <laughs> well, this uh, is entertaining. Well, but not in in, in the, in the Monty way. Python yeah. way. Yeah, nobody can do it the way Monty Python does it. Well, but you do have uh, contacts and relationships with other civil servants in other contracts. 
Yes, I have. I have contracts that are not related to this this study. This this. Do you have ongoing contracts right now? No, we have we have no contracts whatsoever. And uh, what was the last contract you had with uh, the government of Canada that you uh, can recall? Well, they were all suspended on, I believe it was February the 14th. Yeah, he's asked you what one. That was the last contract we had. We let everybody that we had, that we let them know that they were no longer able to work under those contracts. And how many people were employed or contracted through this process that you worked with? How many contractors, subcontractors did you deal with? Uh, since 2015, around over 200. So you had 200 individuals that were contracted on your behalf to do work for the government of Canada through the procurement process. No, some of those 200 people were in the private sector. Well, they're all subcontractors. So they're all private sector, right? So you are sure. the contractor. So you've done a deal and now you've sourced the, that, that opportunity out to a number of other skill sets to do the work. Oh my goodness. Okay, Sousa. How are you? How do you have a finance background? You don't know. I I even know what Anthony is saying. What Anthony is saying is we've subcontracted out to two hundred plus people. Not all of those two hundred people were contracted to the federal government. That's what he's saying. Yes, they're all in private because they don't work as a public servant for the federal government. But what he's saying is there's a subset of those two hundred that worked for the private sector. Silly. Okay, uh, let's see what we got here, folks. We're at uh, 1,426 likes, so we're only, what, 74 away from some uh, free subscriptions. And we have Peeve1973 with a $5 super chat. I so give credit to our MPs who preside over this. If I was questioning them, I would have lost my crap already. Kudos to them. Thanks for all you do, Northern Perspective. Thank you very much. And Bingo Bango with a $5 super chat. Darren seems afraid. He shows his guilt on his sleeve. Firth was a true believer and credulous that he had done nothing wrong. Yeah, Firth she, uh, definitely seems like the pushover. Uh, and that's why I think Fox thinks he's pinky and not the brain. Another Canadian with a 279 super chat. Let's all show up uh, to a local Spike the Hike rally. Well, um, given that everybody is... Uh, oh, you mean like the conservative you, ones? Your your own local ones. Yeah, yeah there you go. I will um, post the link where you can find out if they're holding any. Um, you can go to the conservative website at conservative.ca/events, and um, they post the ones that are coming up. And we have Leo Orchard with a two dollars super chat. Oh no, just wait. This is comedy gold. Okay. Oh boy. Uh, Canadian uh, commander probably with a two dollars super chat. Uh, penance for being late. Watched it live. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> and Bones with a five dollars super chat. Here's the clown. Uh, think further. And uh, a nutty from the Liberals party. Uh, there you go. Pandemonium uh, with a five dollar super chat. Objection. Leading the witness and Troy Boyarski with a five dollar super chat. Chat's going by so fast. I feel like it's playing Frogger. All you awesome folks. Out there. <laughs> <laughs> and then Daniel with a two seventy nine super chat. African. Oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> Was an African or European swallow? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And you had about two hundred of them involved at any going to, at any given time. Yes. He's not even correcting him. He's just like, sure. Um, there's a dispute in terms of the amount. The, the previous uh, question just came to you about uh, the $19 million that's being, that was put forward by the Auditor General is being sourced by GC Strategies. And uh, Christian Firth has said it's only 11.1, 11.2 million. Can you verify that? They were his contracts. So he would be reporting on those. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Sousa. Right at six minutes. Uh, get Mrs. Your Vignola, ass please go ahead. That one. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Oh, Vignola is going to rip him. Uh, next for a couple of $5 super chat. Did Sousa just ask about a, a contract not related to Arrive, Ken? Uh, yes, he did. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he knew it, but he did. Um, Lady Loves Cats with a $10 super chat. I think I may be getting in too deep with NP here. Video on TV, audio from my phone with earbuds and chatting from my laptop. <laughs> Techie my lady here. 
<laughs> and surrounded by your cats, right, my lady? And Humble Tracker with 20 gifted Northern Perspective memberships. Thank you very much Thank for you, that. Thank you, Humble Tracker. And uh, if you received a uh, any membership from any of our uh, lovely members today, please make sure you give them a thank you. The local baron with a $5 super chat, Sousa is cursed like Pinocchio, but instead of having his nose grow with each lie, Sousa just ripens. <laughs> <laughs> well done. And Pandemonium with five gifted Northern Perspective memberships. Thank you very, very much for that. Mr. Anthony, thank you for being here with us today. It's definitely not easy. We, of course, have many questions, and I'm seeking clarifications to understand how the process works in general. And... The objective is to improve the process so that we don't find ourselves in situations like this one. You, Mr. Anthony, your Mr. Anthony, your hand is up online. Is everything okay? Yeah, I just missed the first little bit. Yeah. My translation wasn't working. Um, are you okay if we? I just missed the first. Are you okay if we just re restart? Thanks. We'll restart the clock. Thanks, Mrs. McNaught. Donc, Monsieur, uh... Mr. Anthony. I thank you for being here with us today. It's not easy to come and answer all these questions. I am trying to better understand the process so that we can improve it and make sure that the taxes of Canadians are well used and spent. You told us a bit about your role within GC strategies. You are responsible for security and you have no ties with the contracts. With the members of government, you have no ties with members of government and public servants, and you receive 50% of the income. Did I understand you well? Um. I have no relationships with the with as per my testimony with the with the departments that that I mentioned, but I I do have. C'est ce que je disais également que vous avez pas de relation. That is also what I was saying that you don't have any relationships. But do you receive fifty percent of the revenue? Yes, at GC Strategies we share in profits. <laughs> Did you see that look that Vignola had? <laughs> oh, if looks could kill, oh, he he would have he would have disintegrated. <laughs> that would have been a Doctor Manhattan. Uh, wow, the, just the look that she had was just utter disgust. Holy, uh, Mary Kay Stas with thirteen ninety nine super chat. I knew I would hear you sigh more. He is coached. He is withholding information. I don't feel sorry for them. They got lots of money. To carry on with their lives i wonder how much he made an hour too much yeah any amount is too much too much as i said i feel sorry for their families i do not feel sorry for them d'accord miss thank you it must be disturbing to be here in the committee with us because well stop me if i'm mistaken you are realizing a dream to move from an income earner to that of one who owns a company. And that's commendable because when you own a company, you can receive huge sums of money, and that is nice. Do you own any other companies than GC Strategies, maybe other companies with numbers? Yes, I do have a, a numbered company. Est-ce que ces compagnies numéro là font également affaire avec le gouvernement? Do these numbered companies also do business with the government of Canada, or do they deal with other entities completely? Uh, other entities completely. Okay. Um, je vais vous poser la même question que j'ai posée à Monsieur. I'll put the same question I put to Mr. Firth yesterday. We learned that. A, an accounting firm has interest in tax havens. Do your company also have any interest in tax havens? No. 
Excellent. No. Good. Excellent. Thank you. I would like to come back to the purchase of Corridor. I believe that the starting point for the achievement of your big dream, the dream you had to own your own company. At the time, together with Mr. Firth and Mr. White, at the time you bought Corridor, how many employees were working at that company? Uh, they had no employees at that company. Why am I not surprised? Right? All they're really buying is a company with a pre-established, pre-screened, pre-approved relationship with the government of Canada. That's the only reason they bought them. So they wouldn't have to go through this process. Because otherwise, like, why waste the money, right? So they looked at this company and they may... And, and this company... Like who knows, who knows what they what they paid for it, but it 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 was for no other reason than to just get in with the government of Canada. That's it. <sighs> uh, Humble Tracker with ten gifted Northern Perspective memberships. Thank you very much, Humble Tracker. Um, and we're at fifteen thirty four. Good work, everybody. And let's keep that going up. We're at nineteen hundred uh, uh, concurrent viewers. Rob Lane, uh, welcome to NP Supporter Plus. Thank you very much for that, Rob. And Adam Canadian, welcome to NP Supporter. I think welcome back because I think you've been there before. So thank you very much uh, for renewing that. Okay, and it's interesting. Miss Vignola is. He she she keeps saying, "Well, this is your dream. What an accomplishment." This seems like she's. She, she's she's leading him somewhere um, and I think it's going to be somewhere he doesn't want to go by the time that journey's complete. And before you bought over the company, did you have any interest in that company? Had you worked with the company before? I worked with the company. The owner of the company was a, actually a a consultant of mine when I was at I4C Consulting. Okay. Pourquoi est-ce que vous... Why did you buy Corridor? Quel était l'avantage? What was the advantage for you to purchase Corridor? They have no patent, no intellectual property, and you're saying that they had no employees. So what did you buy? What's the advantage? that Corridor had security clearance and by purchasing Corridor and by setting up GC strategies, the security clearance will be transferred over. Yes, yes, that's the reason. Yes. <laughs> and to the corporate history of the company as well. There you go. Thank you very much. Wow. Thank you very much. I mean, I know we suspected that was the reason, but just, I guess, to hear it. Yeah, it's... um. It's so they could ha they could have government contracts. That's why, the only reason, the only freaking reason. There you go. And uh, <laughs> yeah, and you know what? You, you you may not blame these guys if they were on the level, but they are definitely not. Stephen Hunter with a five dollar super chat sounds like Firth is running the show. This guy doesn't know anything. Oh, I think he knows everything, Stephen. I think he knows everything. But what does he have? He has plausible deniability. That's what he has. So I think he knows a lot. Uh, LC with a two dollar super chip, and we're back. <laughs> there you go. And Pandemonium with a five dollar super chat. I once dug a trench where my sergeant threatened to charge me with a wall if I went one inch deeper. These two wignuts have gone way past. <laughs> yes, yeah, they, they certainly have. They're have. like digging a hole to the magma i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i like this comment heart singer cypher lol love your laugh of victory <laughs> uh, i don't know if it's victory <laughs> it's confirmation i guess okay um donc en achetant corridor by buying corridor and setting up gc strategies you were aware that there will be interesting opportunities with the government of Canada. 
Now, talking about information technology, considering that there have been significant cutbacks for public servants working in this domain in previous years, when were you aware that there's go there was going to be a window of opportunity in information technology? Could you tell us when you realized that it was going to be quite profitable to buy Corridor and then set up your own company? Uh, I guess I could say I realized it when I got into the business in 2005. Merci. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Please, for six minutes. The one thing that Darren Anthony is doing very well as a witness is he's providing very brief answers. There's a very different contrast to, to Christian Firth because the less, the less information you give in your answers, then the less information that you're allowing for follow-up questions on it. And it's a way to keep yourself out of trouble. You know, you stick to very short answers, try to keep them yes or no, and avoid any ambiguity and any interpretation um, that the committee members may have when it comes to looking at your responses. So as a witness so far, despite his answers being ridiculous, the length of them is actually on point. Um, so just something to consider and, and, and listen as you're hearing some of these witnesses answer. LC with a $2 super chat. I love the blatant lying. So proud of our country. <laughs> yeah. And we're about 400 likes behind, folks, so please hit that like button for us. Absolutely. We're almost at 2,000 viewers again. Let's, uh, let's see if we can get over that hump. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Anthony, I, I'm joining this study uh, partway through, and so there's some testimony I haven't been privy to. Um, however, the, the picture that, that seems to be coming to light is one of a small company with two principals that is... Uh, getting lucrative government contracts uh, is out there finding private sector contractors and uh, assembling them to work on this IT project for the for the government. Um, it, your partner <clears throat> indicated it was around an eleven million dollar contract for which your firm received a two point five million dollar commission, and all of that, you know could seem above board, except some of those things are not as they seem. So for instance, in some cases, your, your company isn't actually doing the recruiting. Uh, in some cases, CBSA was doing the recruiting, finding the resources, and then telling them to work through you. And more alarming is the fact that in, in quite a few cases, we have um, Essentially, your company is writing the requirements of the contract and then somehow getting the contract. Uh, also, exaggerating the resumes of the resources that are going to work on the contract, at, at least in one case, without the knowledge of those resources. And so this is a picture that is very concerning to the public, obviously. Can, can you see why the picture that has been painted as a result of these hearings is of concern to the Canadian public? I can only talk about my contracts. So as a, I assume you're a director of GC Strategies, is that a fair characterization? Well, I, I would be the vice president. Vice president, okay. And, and you have shares in the company? How, it, what is your uh, capacity as an owner of the company? We, we are 50-50 owners. Okay, and what is your fiduciary responsibility as an owner of the company? Is it only for your contracts or is it for the entire corporate entity? Uh, I don't know the answer to that. What? Oh, come on! That's not believable. What? You don't know what your financial responsibilities are as it relates to the company? That's complete horse crap. That's putting it mildly. I'm trying to keep it parliamentary. <laughs> I don't think horse crap is parliamentary language. Well, dear. it's 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 more parliamentary than the alternative. Horse manure, how about that? <laughs> what the heck? 
I don't know. He's going to get destroyed later. Rob Blaine with a $5 super chat. Me again, to keep it clean, if you could talk reason with liberal, there would be no one less liberal had to say it. Here you go. LC with a $2 super chat. Government, why did you get uh, $20 million? Answer, I don't know. <laughs> They just like me, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, yeah. Well, that's what Firth was basically saying yesterday. Well, you know, ask the government. Uh, Kim Allen, member for two months. Thank you very much. And Knox for Cut with a $5 super chat. He may have plausible deniability, but he also has no chance of future uh, doing business after looking so unknowledgeable after this two-person company. Yeah, I, I completely agree. There's, there's no way he's going to have any sort of relationships in Canada. Maybe even North America. LC uh, with a $2 super chat. What a gong show, 100%. Pandemonium with a $5 super chat. G CG strategy CFO is Elmer J. Fudd. <laughs> he owns a mansion <laughs> and a yacht. Yeah, yeah. These are these guys are the have yachts and we're the have nots. You're a half owner of a company that does millions of dollars in government contracts and you don't know what your fiduciary responsibility is to the corporate entity? No, I, I, I have no knowledge of that. Well, I, I, I find that somewhat astounding. Um, <laughs> Don't we all? Are, have you read the Auditor General's report? I have not read it, no. The audit. Wait. I'm... Sir, how can you disagree with what's in the Auditor General's report if you haven't read the report? Well, I just know what's in there, okay? I hope, I hope one of them picks up on that question. If you have not read the Auditor General's report, how can you say she's incorrect? That, that needs to be a question that is asked. I really hope that it's asked. The Auditor General of Canada has audited contracts that the company you're a 50% a owner of has, has undertaken, and you haven't read the report. Have you read the Office of the Procurement Ombud report? No, I have not. So as a director of this company and a 50% and shareholder, uh, your company has been brought into the public limelight for uh, potential uh, serious misconduct. Your, your contracts with the government have been suspended, all of the contracts. Um, and this is because of reports that have been written by uh, some of the, the main um, watchdogs uh, who work on behalf of the Canadian public, and they've raised major red flags about your corporate practices uh, of a company that, that you're, you know, you're one of the two principals, and you haven't even read the reports. That's correct. How, how can you dispute the findings of the reports if you haven't read them? Thank you, Mr. Backrack. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for picking up on that. See, the NDP, they do have some good MPs until they don't. Like, if, if they would just stick with common sense, well, if they would stick with common sense, they'd be a conservative MP, I guess, and that's, that's the problem. That's it. And, uh, wow. But I'm, I'm glad I'm glad he, he picked up on that, and I'm glad he's asking the question. And, um, yeah, the smirk, the smirk that is going on with Darren Anthony throughout all this is is just deplorable. Uh, Brian Letwinuk with a five dollars super chat. I could go to committee and answer more questions about this company than he can. <laughs> I predict a cipher f bomb before this night is done. <laughs> I hope not. I'm trying to keep it clean. Will Kalachuk with a two dollars super chat. Another potted plant. Hey, look, don't be insulting, you know, plants because they actually have a use. They produce oxygen. This guy produces just horse crap. Uh, LC with a two dollars super chat. I don't think this dude understands fiduciary. Doesn't sound like it. Yeah, or he does all too well. Yeah, and he's trying to skirt his way around it. Dave Thompson with a seven dollars super chat. Uh, when God was handing out brains, he heard trains and went choo choo. <laughs> My point exactly. Again, I don't know. Un unbelievable as he smirks. Uh, Rebu says with a $2 super chat, 
Uh, I know, telemagically. Uh, Elsie with a $2 super chat. Suspended contracts, but not cancelled. Hmm. Yeah, they're only suspended for 180 days. Um, they said that they're probably going to be cancelled, but they're not cancelled yet. Uh, Canadian Commander with a $2 uh, super chat. Right? It gets worse. Oh, strap in. Canadian Commando. Thank you very much for that. Uh, YouTube cuts it off. And Joyso8, welcome to NP Supporter. Thank you very much. And Daniel with a 279 super chat, not even at the part I saw and getting destroyed. <laughs> Louise A. King, a member for seven months. Uh, wait, it gets better. Wait till you hear why he hasn't read the report. Oh, the memes are ready. Yuji Tai with a final <laughs> super chat. No, no, dig up, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Simpsons reference. Love it. Love it. Um, I, 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 I agree with the numbers that Christian sent for, for our, as he gave in testimony yesterday. So you're, wow, he, ha, huh. he didn't know how to respond there. He did not know how to respond. And he's got caught, and now he's just saying, "Well, I agree, I agree with the numbers that Christian get." Well, how do you know those? How do you know those aren't the numbers that were in the Auditor General's report? Then, I hope Backrack then asked that question. LC with a two dollars super chat, so happy to see this this channel grow. Yes, congrats, thank you very much. And we're at two thousand fourteen viewers, everybody. Well done, and sixteen hundred eighty six likes. Let's get those up. Telling me that your uh, the statements that you've made about the Auditor's General reports are not based on reading the report. It's based on what Christian told you? It's based on testimony given at these committees. I, I just I just find this astounding that someone who works at your level and is the 50% owner of a company that uh, has been scrutinized and brought into disrepute by the Auditor General and the uh, Office of the Procurement Ombud and that now is being looked into by the RCMP and soon the Public Sector Integrity Commissioner is going to be looking through your business dealings and you haven't read any of these reports like this is I, I would <laughs> if I was an investor in this company, I would be very, very concerned. If I was a contractor for this company, I would be very concerned. And if I was the government contracting your company, I would be incredibly concerned that you're not even following the bouncing ball when it comes to these uh, major allegations against your, your company's business practices. Can you see why that would be a concern? Sure. Wow. Mr. Anthony, did you ever attend any of the hospitality events for government officials that Mr. Firth referenced in the last meeting? No, I have not. And have you ever uh, delivered gifts to government officials? No, I have not. Mr. Chair, I'm going to hand the floor back to you and I'll, I'll begin my line of questioning again next round. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Backrack. Uh, Mr. Brock, go ahead, please, for five. five. Uh-oh. Can't stop the Brock. Uh-oh. This is not going to go well. Not at all. Well, not if you're Darren Anthony. Because <sighs> the flippancy of these responses are just... And, and here's the thing. You know damn well he's lying. And it's because of the way he's he's giving these answers. They're short. They're flippant. Like, um, can you see why everybody would be concerned? Sure. That's it. So this is not going to go well. Nux for a couple of $5 super chat. This testimony is just his way of spitting on the committee's face and forcing him to attend. I 100% agree. Leslie Robbins with a two hundred uh, with a $2 super chat. Fox, please take Cypher's glasses away. It gets better. Uh, Jim V with a $5 super chat. This guy needs to go to the golf course and work on his putts. Kitty <laughs> Nukes with a $2 super chat. He has the same smug look as Trudeau and Freeland does. Yeah. Stephen Hunter with a $5 super chat. He didn't uh, read because his doctor advised him not to due to stress, i.e. I can't read. And Canadian Commando, welcome to NP Supporter. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Chair. Chair. Um, like my NDP colleague, um, sir, I, I'm completely astonished of your complete lack of preparation for this committee hearing. You start off in your opening statement talking about how you and Mr. Firth have been 
wrongly portrayed in media, newsprint, committee hearings, MP, word on the street. You talk about the financial stresses, the emotional stresses, and you don't have any concrete answer to clearly relevant questions. You very proudly state it that you stand behind the words of your partner, Mr. Firth, that the Auditor General's report was completely inaccurate. How on earth could you have prepared any less for this hearing by not taking 20 minutes to read the actual report? I find it absolutely astonishing, sir, and quite frankly, it reflects very poorly on your credibility. So I want to ask you some questions for clarification. Are you in a partnership with Firth or are you a director in a company registered either through the Canada Corporations Act or the Ontario Corporations Act? What is it? We are partners. Do you have a partnership agreement? Wow. Yes or no? Checking with the lawyer. Just can I confirm with the, my lawyer for one second, please? Yep. Go ahead. Just uh, mute yourself. Checking with the lawyer. <laughs> Even Vignola, I'm not sure if you see her. She has her hands out. She's like, "What? How do you not know this?" She's like turning around, like, "How? How do you not know?" I don't think it's a, I don't know. I think it's a, will this incriminate me? Yeah, yeah, I, I, that's exactly what it is. And that's why he's looking up with concern. He's like, which, which how do I answer this? Yeah, now in, in a lot of crime and, and law firm TV shows, you'll hear the term plead the fifth. We don't have that in Canada. Um, it's not called the Fifth Amendment. It, but you are, you have the right not to incriminate yourself. Well, and here's the thing. He's asking, he's asking his lawyer probably for, you know, because he's probably looking for a term that doesn't legally bind him, but I don't know how he's going to find a term that does that. Um, Cause you've said you're joint owners of this company, your partners, Stephen uh, Poirier with a $2 super chat. These guys need a better lawyer. Yeah. They need champagne. <laughs> Call them in. Call them in. No, he said better lawyer. Yeah, I know. I, I'm thinking champagne <laughs> is going to be even a better lawyer than this guy. Oh, my. Can we deport him? <laughs> I'll see with a $2 super chat. And Christine May with a $2 super chat. I've never liked politics like I do now. Thank you. Well, you're certainly welcome. <laughs> Lisa LaCroix uh, uh, with a $5 super chat. As this guy spits on committee, he spits on Canadians with total disrespect. Yes. 100% in agreement with you, Lisa. Osiris Gaming with a $5 super chat. His wealth is built on a foundation of deceit, and in the end, it crumbles beneath the weight of his own corruption. And it it is built on the backs of every single tax dollar that comes from a Canadian that is trying to just make their way and survive in this country. LC with a $2 super chat. In law, you consult your lawyer if you have a problem. Yep. Vignola is still in disbelief. Sorry. We are a corporation and I am a shareholder for that corporation. So you're not, not in a, a, you're not in a partnership. You may refer to yourself as partners, but you don't have a legal partnership agreement, correct? That's correct. Okay. So you are a director and you under and you didn't understand that directors have joint and several liability. Meaning that you're both responsible for consequences of the acts of directors. You're aware of that now, sir? Um, I don't believe that to be true. Okay. Well, you can check with your lawyer on that. Um, Mr. <laughs> Firth has put it out there in real evidence that he has committed, not on one occasion, but on multiple occasions, acts of forgery that would be defined as a criminal act under the Criminal Code of Canada. He claims it was a mistake. And as a former prosecutor... Pretty much every single accused that I dealt with in the last 20 plus years always claim they made mistakes. You understand, sir, ignorance of the law is no excuse. You understand that? Sure. So if Mr. Firth was willing to do that, but this is, I'm talking about the Botler uh, complaint, on at least four or five occasions, 
without consulting, without getting approval, without getting clearance from Bottler to change the actual resume to ensure they received a contract, it really begs the question, how many times has your 50-50 partner, director, Mr. Firth, done that on other contracts? Do you have an answer to that? I don't have I don't have it. I don't have any knowledge of that. No, because what he does is up to him and what you do is up to you, correct? Is that your understanding? Yes. I see. Now, who <laughs> was responsible for your web design on your website that probably fraudulently identifies several key government employees boasting about the value uh, of your uh, of your company who was responsible for creating this web design um i'm not sure i believe that we did hire out someone to to build our website for us in 2015. really ladies and gentlemen it's amazing it's not, you know it's not surprising such such secure and confidential information is um is is beyond mr anthony's reach it's it's not surprising you know this stuff is such behind behind such lock and key that there's no possible way that anyone would be able to actually determine who wrote their website oh there it is there it is Does it say when? This 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 is this is who did their website. <laughs> Strong Vine, Ottawa Marketing and Branding Solutions. If you're visiting us, uh, chances are you're looking for a new website, graphic design, printing, or an HD video. There you go. Strong Vine, ladies and gentlemen. Strong Vine, provider for website development for GC Strategies. But you know. Um, but the owner doesn't know who did so it. So difficult. So difficult to find these answers, everybody. So difficult. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Um, I do want to give a shout out to um, uh, uh, P. Teven, um, Peter Teven, who actually gave us a heads up on that. Uh, so thank you very much. I wasn't sure what he was talking about, but as soon as that question came up, I figured it out. So thank you very much. And um so casper h nice to see you again with 10 gifted northern perspective memberships thank you thank you thank you thank you casper uh kim allen with a seven dollar super chat notice anthony looks to the left and down for short answers yep um and chris accurate with a seven dollar super chat uh, firth has a better lawyer than anthony it's a uh, in other words firth pays the lawyer more <laughs> <laughs> and the wheels of firth go, bus go round and round Nice. Uh, Canadian Commando, Brock doesn't sleep, he waits. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Elsie with a $2 super chat, Broxy for the hat trick, Trish Pro with a $2 hat, uh, <laughs> with a $2 hat trick, $2 super chat, wow, how flippant can this moron be? Uh, indeed. Uh, Fifth Healthy Canadian with a $7 super chat, Firth and Anthony remind me of a husband and wife who get caught for tax evasion. The husband knows everything and the wife has absolutely, quote unquote, no clue. LC with a two dollars super chat. Criminal charges now. Steve Poirier with a two dollars super chat makes two point five million dollars a year. Hires a public defender. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. All right. Now, here we go, folks. Okay. Who is the company? Um, I I don't have that information in front of me right now. You'll supply the information to us. Yeah, I can check my records. Okay, and in addition to Mr. Barrett's questions to you, you will also provide to me by, I'm going to give you seven days to do this, sir, the names of all the government employees that are referenced uh, in your website boasting about your particular company. You'll do that because you didn't have the answer as to who they were, but in seven days you'll provide me with that information, won't you? I can try and find that information for you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Barrett. Uh, Mr. Baines, please, for five, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Baines, you look like yes, first. Um, yesterday, Mr. 
first mention that he began working in uh, on government contracts within another company um, in 2007. Were you? Is that you indicated you met met him working uh, within another company, and but you said uh, up until 2010. When did you begin? I started at Veritech in 2005. So Mr. Firth joined Veritech in what year? 2007. So you were there prior to him? Yes. That's what that means. And over this time, um, uh, you, you ultimately uh, developed relationships with uh, public officials, uh, who also have been working there uh, for quite some time. And and at any time, did you meet with uh, Mr. McDonald? No, no, I did not. Okay. Um, uh, you, you, you talked about your only role in previous questions today was to verify uh, subcontractors that were working um, – What's that process? What did you do to verify those subcontractors? Well, for the security process, when once we identify a resource need, we'll make sure they they are eligible to get a government security clearance. They have to get their fingerprints taken. They need a document security number. It's a twenty-five digit code. That's done from any of your like commissioners any fingerprinting with the RCMP. Um, once they have that and that number is verified, they send it to me. They give me their personal information. I entered it into the oldest portal. They Then it's resent to the resource. The resource completes their family history. It gets sent back to me. I review the, that make sure everything's processed and submit it. So you simply did your work through a portal you didn't exchange um any of this information with any public officials you you indicated you you were removed from having dealings with uh specific people you did you you're strictly operating in this in your in role. that yeah in that capacity i'm only dealing with the OLUTS portal I have no contact with any officials. Okay, so in your role to verify and, and do these security processes at any time, um, do you verify like the the people working, um, what their qualifications are? Because um, we've heard from Mr. Firth himself personally stating that uh, he um, he inflated um, uh, information on resumes um, in order to because he had a strong understanding over the years of what uh, was required to what what requirements were needed to be met in order to gain uh, certain contracts. It was all, almost like a uh, a skill developed over time to obtain government contracts, he knew how to do that and uh, would know what, say, keywords, et cetera, would needed to be placed into resumes. He indicated in prior testimony that that's something he did do. He admitted to it. So are you aware of that? Or, or was it your job to verify these things on uh, things of that nature or people's skills, uh, whether they were real or not, um, during these security processes. You know, Karen Deep, sorry, uh, Param Baines is actually filibustering his own question time. He needs to really learn how to land the plane. And what I mean by that is he needs to be able to ask the question succinctly. Like, when you hear Brock and Barrett do their preamble, it's for a reason. 
right? They're, they're framing what they're saying and they're trying to elicit some sort of mindset in the witness that they want before they actually ask the question. Parm is just, he's all over the place and he doesn't really understand what's going on. And you know that this is going badly for both the client GC or the, the, the company GC strategies and the liberals when the liberals are forced to actually ask meaningful questions because they're trying to, you know, ask questions that are going to make this go away and the answers they keep getting make it not go away. So they actually have, uh, have to ask actual questions. So this is, this is kind of bizarre the way this is actually working out. Brenda Wee with a 279 super chat and another, uh, and another Herg one goes down for the liberalese uh and craig robertson with a member comment for three months chuck norris was only once stopped in his tracks in fear he met eyes with an angry larry brocks <laughs> <laughs> stay awesome cypher and fox love what you're doing thank you yeah i think that would be scary uh leo orchard with a ten dollar super chat people misunderstanding he's not arrogant he's a moron who fell into a pot of gold and now it's turned into a pile of poo he doesn't know what's happening <laughs> Uh, LC with a two dollars super chat is min uh, is Minister Turtle just dragging this out or dumb? I th I think it's the latter, unfortunately. Uh, Reap it cheap with a five dollars super chat. We need uh, a Pierre meme from three years ago or so when you told J uh, JT nobody believes it. Actually, have that yes. clip. I have that clip. That's such a great clip. Um and, and yeah, that was just uh, that was uh, during the uh, the We Charity scandal. Um, Ravi saves with a five dollar super chat. I find the idea that someone who appears to be this stupid was making multiple uh, millions uh, per year. He, he's not stupid. He knows darn well. He, he he knows darn well. He's just trying to keep himself out of trouble. I guarantee it. Icewind Dale with uh, thirty three with a seven dollar super chat. Thanks very much for all you do for this country. You're both patriots. Thank you very oh, thank much. Thank LC with a two dollar super chat. Uh, liberal. So what exactly is your job? <laughs> That's basically what he's asking. And it took him 10 minutes to ask it. He'd probably be through like six questions by now if he knew how to ask the questions properly. Mark LaForest, member comic for two months. Great job tonight. I find it somewhat astonishing that I'm hearing these answers. Yep, us too. We're right there with you, Mark. LC with a $2 super chat. Parm cheese isn't a lawyer. It shows. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Adam Canadian with a $5 super chat. Cheers, my man, Cypher and Lovely Fox. Wish I could do more. Congratulations, by the way, on the call out. You guys are doing a great service for Canadians. Uh, thank you, oh, thank oh, you. so much for that. That is not a part of the security process. The security process is basically an individual's personal history. And family it history. It's an individual's personal history to know what skill set they have and what... In, what role they would be doing within government? Not within the PSBC government security clearance process. It's simply more of a um, public safety or, or um, criminal record checks, these sort of things? It's a criminal record check, and I believe you'd have to ask the RCMP on what their process is, but I believe it's a full family history check as well. No, but that's your process. I'm talking about your process. So yeah, my post. Yeah, so you're, so the, you're simply submitting these people's information to other public safety agencies to ensure that they are uh, uh, good citizens. They're not. Uh, um, they don't have any criminal records, and that's it. That's it. So you're, you're not verifying uh, who these subcontractors are with respect to what skill set they have and they're going to go work on uh, government contracts um, where um, uh, you know important information uh, sensitive information is shared no i don't i don't verify that myself okay so your so what was your question role? mr baines how much time sorry if you have a quick question, please go ahead. You're out of time. That's all. I'll, I'll, I'll save it for the next time. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, uh, Mr. Baines. Uh, Mrs. Vignola for two and a half minutes. He hardly asked any questions because he kept talking. Merci beaucoup, monsieur. Thank you very much, Chair. Mr. Anthony, I'll continue. In 2005, you started working for Veritag. Later on, still at Veritag, you met Mr. Firth. 
Mr. White, Mr. Caleb White, did you also meet him at Veritag? Yes. You know, I'm. Maybe it's not relevant, but I'm really surprised that they're not making the connection to Colin Wood. Um, in our in our arrive scam. Um, expose. We actually go through that. These guys all knew each other. The guys at Dalian and Cordex, they knew each other, and and they met at at Veritac, all of them. Um, so it's actually really surprising that that they're not being asked about these questions. Maybe they don't know. Could be. Maybe, 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 I'll, maybe we'll send an email to some of the, uh, um, to to the Yoko members. Um, yeah, you know, maybe maybe we'll ask Stephanie Cousy if they know. Yeah, if we have time. If we have time to to, to actually uh, talk to them uh, on on Monday, um, during our interview, because it's it's relevant because the fact that you have two different companies and they're being caught, essentially committing fraud and and and, um essentially scamming the Canadian taxpayer out of, out, of, out of taxpayer money and all of these guys knew each other that's not a coincidence I'm sorry but it's not um, what isn't a coincidence is Stephen Hunter gave us a one dollar super chat thank you very much Stephen for that uh, loud as fick <laughs> <laughs> with a twenty dollar super chat uh, hi guys from Montreal Quebec people here are so leftist I feel alone in the fight against corruption and liberal ideology type here if you're from quebec give me a glimmer of hope maybe this place isn't so hopeless love cypher and fox thank you so thank much you. for that and bonjour to our friends out in quebec uh lc with a two dollar super chat parm cheese parm cheese <laughs> bubble avenue with a seven dollar super chat parm is the committee equivalent of learning to drive stick if you can't find it grind it <laughs> Nice. Oh man, Stephen Hunter with a five dollars super chat. I can't wait for the conservatives to take a page from uh, from Oprah's book, and you get silver bracelets, and you get silver bracelets, and you get silver bracelets, <laughs> <laughs> and orange jumpsuits. Right. Um, Al Pipke with a five dollars super chat. Uh, short, quick, directed questions appear to cause the most stumbling by Mister Anthony and panic to get guidance from the lawyers. Yep. Because he doesn't have a lot of time to think about it. And non prison with $7 Super Chat, is there a strategy to seem like such an amateur grifter? Invaluable channel, uh, Northern Perspective. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Uh, well. I don't know if it's a strategy. Like, I don't think he does that on purpose. I think he just does. Well, the problem is I think, it, I think his approach here is just to provide as many non-answers as possible so that he thinks he's not culpable in anything. Um, and... Some of this might be on advice of the lawyer as well. No doubt the the lawyer saw everything that was going on and would have debriefed with the two of them and then probably probably provided some recommendations on how to answer the questions today. Like you have to assume that that must have happened. Otherwise, why are you paying your lawyer for anything? Um, a monsieur and Mr. Colin Wood as well. Yes. Okay, Mr. Colin Wood. Mr. Colin Wood set up Coradix, and for whom David Yao had been director very well. Is Caleb White still a partner at GC Strategies? No, Caleb is not a partner at GC Strategies. Qu'est-ce qui fait en sorte qu'il a quitté GC? Why did he leave GC Strategies? Uh, that's a question you'd have to ask him. Oh, okay. If I keep parti sans vous en. So he left without telling you why. <laughs> he just left <laughs> and saying, it's okay. I'm going to leave aside millions of dollars of contracts behind because, in, according to the Business Journal of Ottawa, you are listed as one of the four most important companies with a growth rate of more than 600% in four years. So you think Mr. White just left without telling you why? Did you see the way she was I like love that. We got to get that in the original French. Even <laughs> if we don't understand it, it's going to be beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Just because the, the tone, you know, that she's using and, and she's like, you know, 
wobbling her head back and forth. It was so great. <laughs> I love the I love the sass that uh, Vignola was using there. That's perfect. Uh, LC gifted uh, five Northern Perspective memberships. Thank you very much, LC. Craig Robertson with a two dollars super chat. If I don't know anything, I can't be guilty, right? <laughs> yeah, that seems to be the strategy. And Kurt and Denise, nice to see you. I'm a member from one month. Watch this today. It just keeps getting better and better. Not <laughs> love this community makes it worth watching. It certainly does. Now Caleb was fully upfront with us and let us know why he was leaving. He wanted to go and pursue other options. Oh, okay. No. Very well. So he wanted to check out other options. Mr. West Travis, was he involved with GC Strategies before? He was an employee. Okay. And Mr. Jarvis. And Mr. Jarvis was also in BDO when BDO uh, absorbed uh, Lesage, if I understand. Uh, can you repeat the question, please? Le même Monsieur Jarvis. The same Mr. Jarvis, who had been a manager at Lexor, the company Lexor, and BDO, which subsequently purchased Lexor, the same company. Um, uh, what, what, is the, what, what is the question? La question est... The question is, Mr. Javis was an employee at GC Strategies. Is the same Mr. Javis who had worked at Lexor? Lexor was purchased by BDO, and Mr. Javis now works with BDO. Am I correct? So this is the this is the issue when you have an interpreter that doesn't reflect intonation and tone, because it becomes very difficult for the person receiving the the interpreted statements to actually know exactly what the person is saying and how they're saying it. Um, and I, I I wish we had the, uh, uh, the the Australian gentleman yesterday, but I imagine you know. It's, it's pretty taxing on you when you're listening to some, what somebody's saying and you're translating that at the same time and interpreting that uh, for people. But um, um, it's, it's just it's, it's too bad that we don't have somebody that can actually do that because that's the part that's missing and that's what's confusing Mr. Mr. Anthony. I'm not surprised because it's a little confusing for us as well. Um, but um, uh, I, I don't want to cast any shade on this uh, interpreter because I couldn't do it and uh, there's there's only a few people that, that actually can so anyhow uh, Jeff uh, Rushton with a five dollar super chat do you think Mr. Firth is sitting just out of the camera shot if he is he's going to get in a lot of trouble because it's only supposed to be Anthony and his lawyer there Huntsford with a twenty dollar super chat about half an hour behind going to warn you now Cypher remove the glasses when he is asked about his relationship with Firth by I believe Barrett don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this awesome tacular channel. Thank you very much for that, Huntsford. Thank you. Uh, we have Justin Brown with a 279 Super Chat. He says, I guess the brains was Mr. Woods. Yeah, because I don't think it's Mr. Anthony. <laughs> no, or Firth. Uh, John Caldaway with a $10 Super Chat. Thank you very much. It says, the best dang roofer charges liberals an extra 30%. He calls it a liberal tax. GC Strategies could learn a thing or two from him. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank you to Stealthy Raptor with a $20 super chat. It says, just finished yesterday's session and watching this one live. If you told me a year ago political commentary would consume me, I'd say you're nuts. Thank you so much for the amazing channel and commentary. You know, we were having this conversation, I think it was yesterday in the car, and I said to Cypher, like, I, I never would have imagined that I would be excited about politics, number one. And number two, that um, we would be talking to so many other Canadians who are excited about politics as well. Um, it's I've learned that it's just so important to get involved and to know what your government is doing. And that way we can all be informed voters and that we can participate in our democracy. Right. It's 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 weird. And it's and you know, if if you'd have told us a year ago we would have a community this large and this amazing talking about this, uh, I. 
I'd probably bet the house against that. So <laughs> I'm glad nobody asked me for that bet. Um, anyway. yeah, Will Kowalchuk with a $5 super chat. Thank you very much. It says, sorry to have to sleep. Have a big day tomorrow. Love you all in P and all in chat. Thank you for making me laugh. You're welcome. Get some rest. And we'll see you tomorrow. Have a good day tomorrow. And uh, yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. Uh, Jason Houston signed up to NP supporter. Thank you very much for joining us. And uh, Glenn Stewart, member for four months, says the Twilight Zone in Canada. And thank you to LC for gifting one Northern Perspective membership. And then we have Vet L89 with a twenty dollars super chat. Thank you very much. It says I love you all at MP, but that lib drew a line, albeit a long squiggly one, <laughs> between unskilled but bonded assets creating processes that had access to our most sensitive information with no oversight from GC. Good info. Yep, and remember the the Liberals and the NDP are the same people that voted to keep the money going to arrive can which meant they kept the money going to gc strategies all this time that's right just remember that yes west jarvis did work as an employee for your gc strategies thank you very much mr backtrack please go ahead sir thank you mr chair mr anthony did you sign the 13.9 million dollar contract with cbsa no i did not so you sign contracts for your projects and Mr. Firth signs, proje signs contracts for his projects. Is that roughly how it works? That's correct. As chief security officer, are you responsible for the security clearance for not only the resources that you compile, but also GC strategies itself? Yes. And at the time that the $13.9 million uh -oh. contract with CBSA was signed by Mr. Firth, uh -oh. were you aware that there was a document safeguarding uh, capability requirement associated with that contract? Yeah, this is where he's going to get them. Because remember, this $13.9 million contract, there was a security requirement that GC Strategies didn't meet. And they got the contract anyways. And then mysteriously, like six months later, the security requirement disappeared. And thank you very much to Mara Leach in the house with a thirteen ninety nine super chat. Uh, you guys are doing such a great job. Thank you. Well, thank you, Tamara. It's great to see you. We hope everything's going well in Ottawa. Absolutely. And uh, uh, it is. Uh, it's 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 just a treat to have everybody here. Um, and. Uh, uh, don't bother Tamara too much, everybody. <laughs> uh, she, uh, she's busy. <laughs> so, but uh, Tamara, you're, you're absolutely amazing. Thank you so Thank much you for, for that. Thank you for joining us. Okay. No, I was not. How do you, as chief security officer, how do you review the security requirements of contracts that Mr. Firth negotiates with the government? Or do you? I do the I do once we get a contract awarded we see what is required if we need to add any additional security. And did you review the 13.9 million dollar contract for security requirements after Mr. Firth signed it? After it was awarded it, that document security clearance was not required. Uh I don't believe that was the case. I think that the requirement was removed something like 14 months after the document was signed. I assume that work was already taking place on the contract at that point. Is that not correct? Uh, I believe work was ongoing on that project, but I don't think it required document safeguarding. But the contract itself, this is what the Auditor General and the Procurement Ombud have both found, that the contract itself, in order to sign the contract, GC Strategies needed to have the specific security clearance. You are the Chief Security Officer but you were not aware of that requirement prior to Mr. Firth signing the contract and you did not review the contract for security requirements prior to him signing it. Is that correct? That's correct. <laughs> well, guess what, buddy? You, you are responsible for that, whether you know it or not. Welcome to business. Welcome to being a director as part of that corporation. You're the chief security officer. You want to call yourself that? Then you, and you just said, I'm responsible for all things security. It's whether you know it or not. Welcome to the big boy leagues of running an organization. So you, you are responsible for that security requirement not being there. Anyway, 
um, before we get on to any of that other insanity. Want to give a uh, thank you to Katie Cat with a thirteen ninety nine super chat. Just got an email from the Conservative Party looking for volunteers for the next election. Everyone should sign up. Yes, Thanks. I got that email as well. Um, yeah, contact your local MP if they're conservative, and um, I imagine that the electoral district associations will be doing it as well if they have candidates chosen. So uh, you can contact your EDA too to see if they need any help. And uh, to finish that, she says, thanks for uh, Northern Perspective for such a great community. Well, thank the community itself, Katie Cat. They're, they're the ones that make it. Uh, Clips with uh, Perspective, I'm assuming, uh, with the $10 Super Chat. He is, uh, he is about to use his Jedi powers. There is no security <laughs> clearance for this contract. This is not the contract you were looking for. Uh, Leo Orchard with a $5 Super Chat. And strap yourself to the chair when they ask about his income. Oh, Lord. Oh, no. What part of chief security officer involves the security part? I'm just like, I'm, I'm having <laughs> trouble struggling with this question of how you actually exercise that role with regard to the contracts that your company signs. Um, and I'm also unclear why you and Mr. Firth have, don't have separate companies, because it seems like uh, you're not actually working on the same projects, and nor are you actually exercising your role as security officer when it comes to the work that Mr. Firth is bringing into the company. Help me understand how this how this all works. Yeah, uh, I got a couple questions. Number one. What is it that you do? And uh, what the hell is going on? And <laughs> W-T-F. <laughs> and lastly. You will be destroyed. OK. <laughs> is that all of them? Uh, well, he's he's definitely giving me some emotional damage yeah so uh i think that's all of them uh <laughs> jim carrey doesn't make sense at this point in time we have the office space one but we won't worry about that one right now shepherd with a 2799 super chat hi guys again more people switched over to follow northern perspective some of them called me to thank uh, me for showing them the channel oh I, that's awesome i pray one day you guys lead the country in news media in this country uh, make Canada great again. I didn't even need to read you the expansion. I knew exactly what that meant, <laughs> Shepard. Thank you very much. Thank you much. so much, Shepard. Uh, and we appreciate everybody who is uh, who is sharing the channel out there. We just we want to make sure that people are informed. That's the long and the short of it. Elsie with a two dollars super chat at Tamara Leach, such a Canadian a legend. Yes, she is. She is absolutely uh, a symbol for standing up against this corrupt government, and she should be applauded wherever she goes. Uh, sabotage KCCO with a two dollar super chat. How many hours a month do you th uh, do you think he did? Probably ten, uh, and I'm not exaggerating or being facetious. He probably worked ten hours a month. Daniel with a thirteen ninety nine super chat. Born in the late fifties, and many uh, from my generation don't follow politics. Hard to believe NP is over a year old. Thank you to both of you for having started this community. Oh, it's our pleasure. And uh, thank you to Mike Tremblay with a 279 Super Chat. It says, Tamara L. Cheers with some champagne flutes. Excellent. Very nice. Yeah, if you're able to offer up a, a, a short answer, Mr. Anthony. Uh, the document safeguarding was not required for that, for that contract. Thanks very much, Mr. Bertold. Please go ahead, sir. Welcome to OGO. Or welcome back to OGO. Merci, uh, Mr. Pizzi. Thank you, Chair. Just to be sure that I understood you well, a while ago you said you had not read the auditor. Uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Betel's sound is very poor. The inter interpretation will improve. Come on, Oui. Go ahead. Donc, Thank Mr. Anthony, you. Dit que vous... Mr. Anthony, you said you had not read the AG's report, a report that was devastating for GC strategies. And because of that re report, GC strategies no longer has a contract with the government of Canada. And you want us to believe that? Yes. Monsieur Anthony, c'est... Mr. Anthony, that's uh, very surprising. As the person in charge of security, did you take part in falsifying the CVs of subcontractors of GC strategies to make sure that GC strategies obtain contracts from the federal government? Uh, can you clarify the question? Uh, there's nothing to clarify. You're trying to make uh, uh, Mr. Bertold uh, waste his time there. 
Hudsfer with a two dollar super chat. I was wrong. It was the part with Brock. Uh, well, I think it's the, the the part you're talking about. I think is the entire testimony Hudsfer in yeah. terms of the glasses. <laughs> uh, Pandemonium with a five dollar super chat. One day I would like to see a bronze statue of Tamar on Parliament Hill. Wouldn't that be um, lovely? Diane Sylvain with a twenty dollar super chat. Cipher and Fox, thanks so much for the hat trick live streams. I wake up in the morning with an extra bounce in my step, knowing there's a live stream <laughs> that night. This is so much fun. Love to Tamara. Uh, Dan Demand nine six six, member for two months. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Watching this guy have an egg on uh, on this is glorious. NP the best channel on YouTube. Monday stream. I will be there. And I will have popcorn. Well, just to confirm, Monday is not going to be a live stream. That's just uh, when we're anticipating on recording the interview. And uh, we will be releasing the interview hopefully sometime uh, later in the week. But as soon as we have the, the recording, because anything can happen in Parliament, um, you know, we're going to have a lot more certainty as to when we'll be releasing that. Yep, that's right. And we'll be releasing it as a premiere. So we won't be um, speaking to you live, but we'll be in the live chat. Yeah, so we'll be able to re react along with the rest of you. Have you Did you participate in falsifying or forging the CVs of subcontractors to help GC strategies obtain contracts from the federal government? Yes or no? No. Reconnaissez-vous que votre... Do you admit that your associate did so? No. Alors, comment se fait? So, how come the CVs of subcontractors of GC strategies are not a true reflection of the CVs of subcontractors? And that's why we're undermining your security. It's undermining your security. The questions were put to you about the cottage on documents, meetings with public servants. I have I have no knowledge of that. Est-ce que vous estimez? Do you feel that your associate or partner told us the entire truth? Were you present with him in the room where you are right now? Can you ask the question again, please? Est-ce que? Do you feel that your partner told us the whole truth yesterday? Yes or no? Yes. Est-ce que vous étiez Were you present with him in the room where you are right now when he was giving his testimony? No, I was not. Est-ce que vous avez regardé le Did you watch your partner's testimony? I watched pieces of his testimony. Follow-up question, Mr. Chair. Did you watch it on the Northern Perspective live stream? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. I should check and see if Mr. Filth is a uh, <laughs> is a watcher. I don't think he'd appreciate you calling him Mr. Filth, I'll tell you that. Well, then he needs to uh, up his game in terms of his integrity and credibility. LC with a $2 super chat. This witness always looks confused. <laughs> I laugh my ass. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Canadian Commando with a $5 super chat. Here we go. They should be forced to testify in person. Less shenanigans that way. Don't disagree. Casper H with a $50 super chat. Thanks for all you do. Thanks for all you do, Casper. Sincerely. Uh, Brenda Weeb with uh, a member comment, member for two months. I made my millions. The company is dead. Just trying to keep my butt out of jail. Pretty much, pretty much. And Pam Lambert with a member comment. She's been a member for three months. When Brock was listing off media, he also said, uh, "NP, go back and listen later." Really? Yeah, but it could be National Post. Oh, it could be. Yeah, if he was talking about publications, he was yeah. probably ta talking about National Post. Unfortunately. That would be cool, though. It would be cool. Uh, and if you were saying that, and if Mr. Brock's team is listening, thank you very much, Mr. Brock. <laughs> Shepard with a 1399 Super Chat. I want to use this uh, to say thank you to Tamara Leach. Thank you so much. You rock in my world. And thank you so much for what you did for our freedom in this country. I will say hi to Brandon Addison for you. There you go. Thank you very much for that shout out to, uh, to Tamara. Alors, comment pouvez-vous affirmer? How can you say with all certainty that he did not lie? Once again, it's very difficult. Your partner told, called everyone a liar, and now I find your testimony so far very unbelievable. Did you receive contracts from the government since 2015? 
What was the amount of the contracts you received since 2015 from the federal government? Uh, how many contracts have we received since 2015? Is that the how question? How much money did you receive personally? Combien d'argent avez-vous reçu personnellement? <laughs> How much money have you personally received from the federal government? He's like, I've had enough. I'm speaking in English. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. I don't have those figures with me right now. Est-ce que vous vous engagez les fournir au que? Can you commit to send us uh, that to send the information to the committee, Mr. Anthony? Sure. Est-ce que vous pouvez nous dire en même temps? Could you also tell us how much money you personally withdrew from the contract, the ArriveCan contract? I, I can look. I don't have those numbers in front of me. Est-ce que vous engagez à fournir? Can you also provide the committee with those amounts as well? Because, Mr. Anthony, you know the committee can demand that you produce them, we could oblige you to provide all that information. Will you willingly commit to send that information to the committee? Um, can someone check my translation? I'm getting some serious echo here. I can't, it's overlap I'm hearing from the minister and then my translator. I can't quite pick it out. Okay. okay. Well, we actually are out of time uh, for Mr. Bertold. Or Bertold, maybe what we'll do. Um, actually, we have Mr. Jouari next. Uh, Mr. Point of order, Mr. Speaker. Yes. It seems that there was a lot of. It would appear that there were lots of problems with interpretation. The witness had difficulty answering my questions in French, so I think that it's better for me to have additional time to ask my questions. Yeah, the, the five minute mark though. <laughs> so. Uh, uh, I know, but there was a lot of problem for the translation and it's I, I, unfair I account, for I accounted, francophone. No, I accounted for yeah, that. I reset your clock to five, to the very beginning. You were 20 seconds, 26 seconds in when we had to interrupt, I set it back to zero. So you did have your Thank full you. five minutes, I'm afraid. Um, we're going to get to Mr. Zawari, then we will have our 10-minute suspension, and I will get the, uh, the clerk um, and the IT folks to look at to discuss with Mr. Anthony the, uh, any other translation issues. But we will get it fixed. Uh, Mr. Zawari, please go ahead, sir. I, so I just want to call out, again, the fairness by Ms., uh, Mr. McCauley there. Um, you know, it doesn't matter if it's a conservative. It doesn't matter if it's a liberal. He, he tries to apply the rules fairly, no matter who it is. And that's the mark of a very good chair. Even though the chairs are elected members of parliament, they they are there. The intention is that they act fairly and according to the yeah, rules. Yeah, they're expected to act nonpartisan when they're in the chair role. When they're in the House voting, it's a different story. But when they're the chair of that committee, they're expected to be nonpartisan. And a lot of MPs that actually have a desire to be Speaker of the House, um, they actually, they, they, they try to um, get chair positions in order to um, kind of build up their credibility as being nonpartisan. Um, so well, and it's practice too, right? Because if you think about it, we're, we're, I mean, we're just humans. So it's kind of human nature to want to do what you've done this whole time, which is, you know, support the conservatives, but to practice being nonpartisan, you would, you would be the chair or house leader, um, um, these sorts of positions that'll get you ready for being an, a non-biased speaker of the house. Right. hundred percent, hundred percent. And, uh, uh, and as we said, it establishes your credibility. So, um, um, you know, it, it, it's, it may not be great because you're, you know, sometimes they will rule against their own party and that, that you know, that frustrates people watching, but um, it's, it's fair. And that's why we have so much respect for Mr. McCauley and the Mighty Yogo Committee, because um, that integrity, it just, it shines through. And that's why I think he also has so much respect from, from the other MPs. And it's an example for the rest of us as well. Mm -hmm. um, Colt with a $5 super chat. Two people in GC strategy wonder if we uh, see a prisoner dilemma. 
who knows? And we have uh, Jeff Sagan with a $5 super chat. No real social change has ever been brought without a re revolution. Revolution uh, is but a thought carried into action. Emma Goldman. Good quote. Very nice quote. And we have uh, Sean N with a $7 super chat. My work night is flying by. Only two hours to go. Working for, uh, looking forward to tomorrow's stream on Clyde. Do something with NPB there. And Elsie with a two dollar super chat. Uh, now we can't even get proper translation. Waste. Yeah. Um, well, the good news is I think they're probably going to be switching partway through um, because they usually do do that. But um, you know, time will tell. Time will tell. I'm just making sure I didn't miss any, and I think we are good. So here we go to Mr. Jawari. Yeah, it might be an issue. It's on Are you? Uh, you're on mute, sir. Wow. Uh, we're having trouble now with Mr. Shawari, so why don't we do our 10 minute suspension right now and we'll get the audio and everything fixed and we'll start back with uh, Mr. Shawari. And 10 minutes or so. Thanks very much. And we I believe suspended. this is, this is when glad we edit. We yep. have you back speaking. Go ahead for uh, five minutes, please, Mr. Shawari. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Anthony, as the Chief uh, Security Officer of a uh, Canadian corporation, which you hold 50% share, you told us that you also share into the profit of the corporation. Uh, am I right to understand that? Yes. Okay, Mr. Fritz yesterday um, indicated to us that the net the net revenue from the eleven point two million dollars that was granted to GC Strategy, um, uh, he uh, the this GC Strategy has earned two point five million dollars. Do you share uh, based on um, based on that uh, one point two five million dollars of that two point five million, sir? Yes, we share in the profits of GC Strategies. So I assume indirectly you're saying that you 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 have benefited from 1.25 million dollars net on that. So uh, can you explain to me how you share the profit? However, when it comes to the risk associated with that, or with any type of uh, inclusion, uh, you 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 are very comfortable saying, as a chief security officer, I do the check on the resources, which I understand based on Mr. Fritz. Yesterday, the testimony was over 30 um, uh, consultant, as it relates to ArriveCAN, that you must have processed their security background, uh, yet you do not know anything about the project, you do not know anything about uh, uh, you know, document tracking, and the only thing that you've made a comment is that the documents uh, um, safeguarding was not a, a request can you can you can you explain to me how you're comfortable taking 1.25 million but you're also very comfortable washing your hands off from anything that has to do with arrive can um i can only speak about my contracts okay so i, I take it that you are comfortable with taking 1.25 but you're not comfortable talking about other contracts. Okay, so well, let's talk about your contracts then. You said you have contracts uh, for private sector, and you also have different contracts. Uh, you have public sector contracts for different accounts. Can you give me a breakdown of how many uh, of your total uh, accounts that's under your supervision? How many of them are private? How many of them are government related? I would say 60-40 private so, sector. 60% private sector and 40% public. Any of those private uh, contracts that you have been securing work directly or indirectly with the other 40% in the government? Um, in some occasions, yes. Uh, on some occasion being 80%, being 40%, being 10%, being 1%? Uh, 10%. 10%, okay. So can you tell me what departments Aside from uh, the, the accounts that Mr. Fritz holding, you are holding uh, visa, uh, in, within the government of Canada. Which department um, do you have a relationship with? We don't hold any 
contracts with the government of Canada at the moment. Can you tell me what contracts you held before that as part of that 40%? Uh, sh sure, I, can, I could get that information to you. Uh, so I'm, I'm sure you've been, you've been since 2015. Can you give me the top three department that you worked in? Uh, D and D, Agriculture Canada, and Global Affairs. Okay. Did Mr. Fertz at any time work any on those accounts? Not that, I, not to my knowledge. Okay. Um, do you have uh, documentation safeguarding in those three departments as part of the work that you're doing? No, we've never had document safeguarding in our history. You've never had document safeguarding in history, regardless of the department that you're working with. It is, and you're saying because PSPC did not request you guys, or you did not understand that it, that was a requirement. Am I Wait a minute. These guys did contracts with the Department of National Defense, and they didn't have document safeguarding. What? What the hell is going on? Thank you, Mr. Cooper. I'm speechless. I, I really, really am. That's I'm, pretty serious. I'm sure the people in uh, the National Department of National Defense are going to be very interested to hear that. The right to understand that. Uh, I don't have any knowledge of PSPC's processes. You don't have any knowledge of PSPC processes yet. You signed contract 40% of the time with three different departments. I found that very hard, sir. That you don't understand the PSPC process uh, regarding safeguarding of document or anything else while you sign 40% of your contracts. I'll be getting another term and I'll be following on, uh, on those lines. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Mr. Zwari. Uh, Mrs. Block, please go ahead for five. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Mr. Anthony, the Auditor General found that GC Strategies was involved in the development of a contract from the Government of Canada valued at $25 million that your firm uh, received in May of 2022. Now, I know you've made a... Uh, you've tried to build a bit of a firewall between your contracts and Mr. Firth's contracts in saying that they are separate. But it is my understanding in your role as the chief security officer that you provide him with support when it comes to security assessments. Is that correct? With regards to security assessments? Yes. Yes. So in, in setting the criteria for the contracts, for GC's, uh, that GC Strategies ultimately won. Did you provide any advice to Mr. Firth on the security requirements for that contract? No. Why not? If that's your role at GC Strategies, why would you not have provided him with any advice on that? I was not asked. So you only provide advice when you're asked? It's not a given that in your role as the chief security officer, you would be providing that support? Yes, I only give knowledge when asked. This is, uh, yeah, he's 100% he's, he's trying to do this plausible deniability garbage. But guess what? That's not the way it works, folks. <laughs> if you're a 50-50 ownership partner call whatever you want in a company you take 50 percent of the risk so you're responsible for this crap whether or not you know about it or not that's the way this stuff works well you're accountable at least yeah you're yeah. accountable you're just as accountable as the other guy doesn't matter and you're trying to tell me that uh that both of you you did all these contracts you never talked to each other and you just just money would show up in your bank account really Nobody believes you at all. Yeah, we definitely need to get that meme next. And I uh, want to give a shout out to Ninja Squirrel Studios uh, for his comment. I went back to check the Brock shout out quote, uh, and it is 
uh, quote, in the media, newsprint, committee meetings, NP, word on the street, end quote. He was 100% talking about Northern Perspectives. So, Very cool. Thank you. Um, Thanks for looking that up for us. That's so that's awesome. crazy. That's crazy. Um, <laughs> Peter Henry, NP is the most fun you can have with your pants on. <laughs> <laughs> You're lucky I got that. Amazing. <laughs> that is so funny. Oh, we had the best community. Uh, yeah. So anyway, here we go. As a as a 50-50 partner, do you receive 50% um, of the commission that is earned on Mr. Firth's contracts? Yeah, it's GC Strategies. We share in the profits, yes. Share in the profits but not in providing advice when it's actually your job to do so. Okay, I get that. I guess I'm, maybe I don't. In your role, you would identify resources, vet them, and then notify Mr. Firth on the eligibility of the subcontractors. Is that correct? Yes. Would Mr. Firth ever ask you to change anything? No. Would you ever notify him of any discrepancies or any wrongdoing? Absolutely. Did you have to in the past? Never. <laughs> oh, come on! <laughs> you can't make this stuff up, folks. Would you ever notify him of there's any wrong? Absolutely. Have you ever had to? No. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, like, Kelly Block is one of these MPs. She is so sharp, but she, she, she gives you this false sense of security because she is so kind in, in her approach, but then she gives you... Uh, she gives you just these these very cerebral questions. She's a, she's a very very good MP, uh, and it's good to see her on Ogo. So thank you, Miss Block, for um, for all of your questions and your work on this file. Would he ever ask you to overlook anything? No. Okay. I'm not going to refer to the Auditor General's report. That's the one that you and Mr. Firth are disputing, but you have admitted you haven't read yet. And I'm turning to page 18. And in the Auditor General's report, she identifies some issues with security clearance and some task authorizations for GC strategies. And I'll, I'll just quote it for you. The Canada Border Services Agency issued two task authorizations for cybersecurity assessments of the application under two of the GC strategies contracts valued at approximately $743,000. The task authorizations required that the resources have a reliability security status. And what the Auditor General found is that security assessments were completed for ArriveCAN in a pre-development environment by, um, by subcontractors under GC strategies. However, they found that some resources that were involved in the security assessments were not identified in the task authorizations and did not receive security clearance. In addition, the agency received invoices for resources listed on the task authorizations. However, it was un unable to provide any supporting documentation to confirm that work related to the security assessments was performed by four of the five resources listed. Wouldn't that be part of your job? Oh, I love the look that she's giving. Yes, it absolutely would. So this is a big problem, folks. So... Um, you know, one of the other, in the other portion of the contracts, the argument from both Firth and Anthony is, oh, well, you know, the, the, the security clearance for GC strategies, you know, that, that wasn't required. Okay, fine. So now what the conservatives are going after is the actual security clearances for the resources themselves. And there are different levels of security clearances that these resources can actually be provided. So as part of this project, the CBSA, Canada Border Services Agency, is saying that if you're, you know, we need work done, which is the cybersecurity assessment, meaning what these people were probably asked to do 
is to evaluate the security hardening of the infrastructure behind the arrive can app and that would prevent any malicious actors from trying to actually hack into it and gain control of it gain access to the information etc so what the auditor general is saying is that there's resources that were actually working on this that didn't have that security clearance that's a big problem huge problem because it means that you had people that weren't cleared to have access to information having access to that information that's a big problem but what's not a big problem is the two dollar super chat that uh, uh kurt and denise uh, have uh, have thrown our way thank you very much presuming we all got pants on never presume <laughs> Never presume, Kurt and Denise, especially when people are in the comforts of their own home. They can watch Northern Perspective however they like. Hidden in plain sight. A member comment for four months. What makes you think she is a witch? <laughs> what makes you think she is a witch? Well, she turned me into a newt. A newt. I got better. John Cleese. Gotta love him. Monty Python. If you haven't seen Monty Python in Search for the Holy Grail, you have missed out on life. Go and watch that after. It's one of the... Uh, most classic British comedies that you can uh, ever lay your eyes on. So thank you very, very much for that. Uh, all right, let's continue, folks. Um, all of the resources that we provided under those contracts had security clearance. So you're once again disputing the Auditor General's report in regards to what she found. What, what I can tell you is that all GC Strategies resources that worked on the contract had security clearance. So, again, the Auditor General found that the agency was unable to provide any supporting documentation to confirm that work related to the security assessments was performed by four out of the five resources listed. So that's a pretty high percentage of no documentation to confirm that security assessments were conducted. I, I would suggest, sir, that you read the Auditor General's report before you actually dispute uh, what's in it. <laughs> and that perhaps, again, as a director or a 50-50 partner in this company, you would seek to understand some of the some of the uh, allegations that are being levied against your company. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Mrs. Block. We'll go to you. Sorry, we're out of time for a response, uh, sir. <laughs> um, but I'm sure we'll get back to another intervention. Uh, Mr. Du, please. Uh, welcome to Go. Well done, uh, Kelly McCauley. Uh, you mean just, Kelly Block? No, Kelly McCauley, too, because because uh, Anthony was trying to respond to what uh, Kelly Block was saying, and there was no response warranted because Kelly Kelly Glock didn't answer a question or didn't ask a question, but she was basically saying, "You pre you may want to actually read the freaking report, buddy, that you're claiming that you didn't read before you try and dispute it." Yeah, but that's the part that I really liked. <laughs> right, and then and then he tried to say something in response, but Kelly's like, "No, no, there's no time for a response because she didn't ask a question." So uh, you, you gotta love it, uh, Canadian Commander with two dollars super chat. Thanks, Barnaby, for shout out to Con MPs watching. There you go. Um, all right, Miss Sidhu. I think he said Miss Sidhu. Let's see. Um, <laughs> uh, how are we gonna plan uh, the Northern Perspective Barbecue? Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, we're over 2,000 likes and we're at 2,117 concurrent viewers. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I will pass to Mr. Jory. Uh, uh, thank you, Madam Sidhu. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Mr. Anthony. Okay, so um, let's talk about the, the number of RFP. You told us that... Uh, um, the business that you bring to GC Strategy is split between 60, 40, 60 private, and 40% government. You highlighted the D and D agriculture and transportation as three areas that uh, you know that you hold as part of your account uh, um, account portfolio within the government. Uh, can you tell me um, since 2015? Uh, that used to, you 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 perform uh, GC strategy. How many RFP in general in, in in those departments have you responded to, and what was your success rate? 
uh, for GC problem. strategy success rate? I think we ran some numbers yesterday. I believe we we, we submitted over 200 RFPs, and I believe our win 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 rate was around 15 to 20 percent. Okay, so uh, that's good. It looks like you were watching uh, the the testimony, and that that's that's good because it, it, you earlier indicated that uh, you, you had watched part of that testimony. So it look, looks like you're watching that part of the testimony, which is good. Okay, on, on the 15 to 20% win rate, um, and what, what's your win rate on the public side? Sorry, on the private side. Um, I don't have those numbers in front of me. I would assume it's probably a little bit higher, 20 to 25%. 20 25 percent okay okay um so when uh, can you tell us how much effort does it go into uh, preparing an rfp so 100 rfp um you, you put over 200 rfp at 15 percent that's about uh, that's about 30 which in my math doesn't add up since you've had 60 to 65 um uh, you know uh, contracts with the government so there, there's some 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 way my math doesn't add up and i'll, I'll leave that to another round but uh can, can you tell me uh, now on your percentage of uh sorry uh, you talked about the percentage under 20 percent okay so let's go back to 2005 in your earlier response to uh one of the questions you said that you saw a trend as early as 2005. Can you tell me exactly what you saw that trend to be, and what was the uh, what was the driver uh, that you saw in 2015 to say, "Oh my God, this is a perfect time to start this company." And Parm and Jawari, they 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 probably you know go to the same school of of questioning people because they they just they have to land the plane yeah they talk way too much about the relevant stuff and then because he's talking so much he actually gets confused as to what question he's actually asking yeah he like loses his own train of thought i mean i do that too but i'm not an mp <laughs> yeah and you're not you're not in committee and trying to get to the bottom of this and wasting your own question time no i'm not interrogating witnesses i mean if if i was i would probably suggest they swap me out for another mp there you go <laughs> Um, just want to give a shout out to, uh, don't think I read it, uh, Troy Boyarski, but 20 uh, Northern Perspective gifted memberships. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much for that, Troy. And we have Kay Bradley Mason with a $2 super chat. Did I hear barbecue? Yeah, I heard it too, and I don't know what's going on, Kay Bradley Mason. <laughs> uh, so um, it was Genghis Tron who was asking what city we're based out of, and I said Random City, Ontario, because we've made no secret that we're in Ontario, but we're not going to get any more specific than that. Yeah. Um, and uh, they had remarked, um, "How are we supposed to plan the NP barbecue if if we don't know what city, right?" Well, so. maybe we can do uh, like the uh, you know the spike the tax rallies or something. Yeah, like everybody that. have your own barbecue. There you go. Yeah. Northern perspective barbecue. Invite all country. your friends and family over, and then and then just inundate them with politics <laughs> shove, shove them in front of the television and then put northern perspective on i guess uh trish pro with a two dollar super chat worked for years uh ago on rfps uh before sucks doing them yeah it really sucks doing them there's a lot of work uh behind them especially depending on the amount of requirements that are actually uh you're trying to meet with the rfp well in 2000 2005 i started as a recruiter and i started in the business at that time I didn't realize the trends immediately, but I knew that I enjoyed doing the work and it was a, it was a good way to make money. Okay. So, so when you say good way to make money, naturally you saw the margins that you, the, your firm at that time, which you were an employee was making, because I'm sure you're privy to that, correct? I was not privy to the margins that. that okay, those then how do you know it's a good way to make money? I was speaking personally for myself based on salary. Oh, so what you meant is that by by transitioning into becoming a uh, company owner, uh, you, you would make more money than the the salary. 
but at no time, based on what you're claiming, you were you had preview into the margins that those subcontractors were making. I would well, depending on contracts awarded, you, you could see that there's margin involved in a RFP win. Okay, can you tell me based on your from your 2005 to 2015, what kind of margin was there? Uh, at that time, I I believe it was an average of 20 25 percent. Okay, so that's what you saw in there. Now, why 2015? Why not 2010? Why not 2017? Um, I guess that's a great question. It was. I guess that time in in our lives, we decided that it was we could try and do this ourselves. It was right for our families, and we took a chance at starting a company, and it worked so, up until uh, a couple of months ago. That's, okay, that's sir, our time, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, Mrs. Vignola, please, two and a half. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Mr. Anthony, yesterday, Mr. Firth told us that to prepare accounts and the processes with the government, he, he, he needed to work about 10 hours or so per month, 40 to 80 per month. All you have to do is fill security paperwork. How many hours did it take you per month to do that? Um, I, I'm the chief security officer, but I also get my own business. I work no. private sector accounts. Je parle, je parle vraiment pour arrive. I'm really talking about the security paperwork for Arrive Can. How many hours per month did it take you to earn she wants to know the dollar per hour that he spent, uh, that he got paid on a Rive can. He doesn't even know because it's so extraordinary. Right. So he's, he's so she's asking, okay, so all you did on a Rive can is do the security clearances and you got paid $1.25 million for that. Please tell us how many hours per month you worked on a Rive can. And he's going to say, I don't know. $625,000 per year. I, I have no idea. Est-ce qu'on parle de 10 heures? Are we talking about 10 hours, 20 hours per month? Are we talking about 100 hours? I don't know. Again, I, I, I don't know. Okay. C'est vraiment... Uh... Very well. You really experienced the ultimate dream. You had a task no need to inform yourself about the contracts and you received significant profits it's more than the american dream it's the canadian dream that we've seen <laughs> i have a few questions when you were working at veritag did you meet with some people for example david yao no. No. Ask about Colin Wood. Okay. You are saying that Colin Wood was someone you met there and then you formed Coradic and somebody you did business with as well. I worked with Colin Wood at Veritas. Okay. Very well. Yes, you worked with Colin Wood at Veritech. Thank you. Someone, someone uh, asked the question. Uh, John B. with five gifted Northern Perspective memberships. Thank you very much. Uh, and it looks like that was a times two, uh, John, uh, uh, John B. B. Thank you very much. And um, uh, just trying to make sure that I'm not missing anything here. Um, because we value every single contribution that everybody gives. Uh, so I think that's... Uh, uh, I think we're good. I think we're good. But uh, yeah, so they definitely work together at Veritech. I'm glad that is coming out. And you also worked with Ver Veriluk Alexander. I, I 
don't know that name. Thank you very much. Mr. Backrack, please go ahead, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Anthony, you uh, previously said you're responsible for the security clearance, not only of the resources, but also of GC strategies. How do you exercise that responsibility? Uh, can you clarify the question uh, for the resources? No, for the company as a whole, you're the chief security officer for the whole company and you're responsible for GC strategies, security clearance. How do you exercise that responsibility? Well, we have a, a secret facility clearance and then I maintain that. Okay. And we, fo we follow those, we follow the guidelines set out by PSPC. And you said earlier that the $13.9 million contract did not require document safeguarding capability. How do you know this? Uh, based on past testimony, I, I, I noticed yesterday that- From that past committee good. testimony? Yes. Okay, so the office of the ombuds, uh, the procurement ombud, stated that uh, the contract for $13.9 million, $13 million uh, the contract itself stated that, quote, the contractor must at all times during the performance of the contract hold a valid designated organization screening, DOS, with approved document safeguarding at the level of protected B. Um, did your company hold that a security no, we clearance did not. at the time that the at the time that it was signed. So why earlier did you say that the contract didn't require document safeguarding when in fact it did? Uh, those words are PSPC's words. I, I'm, not, I'm not aware. Uh, I don't think so. This is the contract itself. This is the office of the ombuds, or the, sorry, the, the office of the procurement ombuds person. And the, Citing the contract, and the, this is the words from the report, the contract stated, quote, the contractor must at all times during the performance of the contract hold uh, approved document safeguarding at the level of protected B. So I, I guess what's shocking, Mr. Anthony, is that you're the chief security officer. This is a security issue. We're talking about matters of national security. And you weren't familiar with the requirements of the contract at the time that your partner signed it. And it comes back to my earlier question about how you actually carry out your responsibilities as a chief security officer, or whether this is just a title that you guys, you did beat up the titles and you became chief security officer, but actually you don't do any chief security officer things. I, I'm, I'm struggling to understand how you fail that's, to that's provide time, this Mr. basic Backrock. level we'll of We'll have oversight. to allow a bit of Thank time you. for... Uh... If you could have a response, Mr. Anthony. I, I have no response. Thanks very much, Miss. I have no response because I'm a douchebag. <laughs> that's that's the response. Like, I know that's unparliamentary language, but it I'm is sorry, unparliamentary language. It is the most appropriate characterization of uh, of that response that i could actually come up with without cursing too hard i guess yeah like what a <laughs> what a what an ass there you go what an ass uh, what the hell is going on like anyway jim devlin with 10 gifted northern perspective memberships thank you very very much for that and troy baryarski with a 10 dollar super chat the heck with ball caps and sweaters. If you guys ever get flags, I'd fly one. Your passion <laughs> shows and it's only valued. Thank Thanks you. again, Northern Perspective and team. Well, thank you very thank much you. for that, Troy. Um, <laughs> sometimes <laughs> sometimes the passion comes out a little bit more. <laughs> so, it's a little more colorful sometimes. Yeah, 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 yeah a little bit more colorful. Um, but just to bring everybody back. Um, so if you haven't seen it, I suggest you 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 go to our arrive scam playlist, and um, this is in our Bottler evidence unveiled uh, portion of it. Um, this is uh, this is part of that video, and this is where we actually talk about the different relationships that these guys have. So everybody started over here um, in in uh, Veritac. Um, and um, 
this is Mr. Anthony. This is Christian Firth. This is Caleb White. This is Colin Wood. So all of these guys met at Veritac. Shortly after that, Colin Wood and Darren Anthony, they went over to I4C Consulting. Uh, and then Caleb White joined them. Then they met this guy. And I forget this guy's name off the top of my head. Uh, I think his name's Michael. Um, and then these two guys, they ended up becoming the, ex the head executives of Craddix. Over here, and this is before we knew about David Yao, this is where David Yao is. He's CEO of Dalian. has a grand total of three people, right? So you have Cordex and Dalian that have been screwing everybody over and subcontracting back and forth to GC Strategies. And then you have Christian Firth and Darren Anthony that were screwing everybody over. Why did Caleb White leave? Maybe, and I'm just spitballing here, Maybe Caleb White was the only one of the four of them that actually had any integrity and said, ah, uh, this seems really shady. I'm getting out while I can. Maybe. Because what he's doing now is, is not consulting. It's not staffing. He has an actual job. So, maybe. Just, just, I am just being, being speculative at this point. Thank you for Reapy Cheap with a $2 super chat. It says some merch will start conversations with others. Um, thank you very much. We know that a lot of you have been um, asking for merch um, and we apologize at this point. We don't think, um, we think that we might get distracted. Our, our main focus for this channel is bringing information to Canadians and we don't want to divert our attention um, to something to We're something else yeah, yeah. Um, we want to make sure that we are 100 percent focused on what we're doing in committee on what we're researching in the background and because it is just the two of us on the production team um, we are very fortunate that we have four wonderful moderators including barnaby um, but in terms of producing and researching it's just cypher and i um, so we don't want to have something distract us from our our ultimate task which is getting the truth to canadians through our youtube channel because remember on top of all of this there's a day job that sometimes can go up to 60 hours a week and um, we do have a son with special needs as well um so, and we so want to make sure he's getting the attention that he deserves so um like we you know fox and i are we <laughs> throughout all our lives and this is probably why we're so compatible it's you know we take the approach of um, if you're going to do something, then do it right or overdo it. Um, yeah, if it's worth doing, it's worth overdoing. That's kind of yeah. our motto. <laughs> so believe me, it would. we would love to be able to just like put on some Northern Perspective you know, gear and, and, and leave the house. Like that would be amazing. Um, is that a possibility in the future? Yes. Um, but it, I think it only becomes a possibility, you know, when we're in the position of, you know, maybe we're, we're doing this full time, but we don't and see that happening And maybe we have a, a producer who can handle yeah. that sort of stuff. So, um, so it's not off the table, but right now uh, I don't think it's going to be in the cards because, again, it's it's going to detract from, from the product. So, and I hope everybody can understand that. Um, Leo Orchard with a $2 uh, <laughs> super chat. And it only gets worse. Oh, man, it gets worse? <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. But wait, there's more. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Daniel with the 279 Super Chat. Notice the smirk on his face. Lost for words. Mm-hmm. 100%. And Jim Devlin with the $5 Super Chat. Where's the MP merchant on a dice? I'd like a long sleeve shirt. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the one that Fox read before. And then uh, Carolyn Rome with a member comment. Uh, maybe you can hire GC Strategies to find someone to make merch for you. <laughs> no, because then they'd subcontract it three times. Yeah, and, and it would cost you guys way, way too much. Yeah, so. Uh, next. And thank you, Nux for Cup, with a $5 super chat. It says, we thought Firth's refusal to answer questions was contempt. This entire testimony is pure definition of contempt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. For sure. And there's more. <laughs> there's more here. Well, let's hear more. Mr. Uh, Genwis, uh, for five minutes, please, Oh, sir. no. Get him. Mr. Anthony, you, you really had me at I didn't read the Auditor General's report. <laughs> now, this report was tabled more than a month ago. Your company has faced grievous consequences, which you have described because of this report. 
You've been required to testify in large part because of the findings of this report. And this report is feeding into an RCMP investigation that could result in criminal charges against your long-term business partner and against you. Uh, Mr. Anthony, this report is merely 36 pages. And at no point did you think, maybe I should read this thing. Uh, no, I did not. Uh, Mr. Anthony, why are you lying to this committee? <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, because, um, come on. Like, Jim. Oh, come on! Like, it's, it's, it's crap. It's such an obvious lie. It is such an obvious lie. Like, give me a break. You didn't read the report. Like, nobody believes you. I, I'm not lying to this committee. I swore an oath. You, you did, sir. Um, what, what do you think you have to gain by claiming that you didn't read the Auditor General's report? I have nothing to gain. Why are you making this claim when it's clearly not true? It is true. Sir, how many how much time did you spend preparing for this hearing today? Not a whole lot. Uh, roughly, though, how, how much time did you spend preparing for this hearing? About as much time as he spent on working on a rive can by the sounds of it. Zero. Just saying. Just saying. Diane Sylvain with a $5 super chat. I understand about the merch, but I want the Amazon Arise Camp backpack. Like awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you're taking a bribe. Apparently. Yeah, is it going to be full of money too? Jarsha with a $5 super chat doing merch through GCS. Uh, I don't think any of us want the price tag. Cooper, $3,700 for a hoodie. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is going on? <laughs> but Amazing. it would come with the meme, so maybe the, it's a bit of a bargain. Yeah, uh, a Jarsha. little meme on a USB stick or something. Right. Uh, Daniel with a 279 Super Chat. This is the part I saw this morning. Okay, here we go. A couple of hours. A couple hours. Okay. And you didn't think as part of that preparation you should read the Auditor General's report. It was against my doctor's wishes for me to be working. I have not been working since the start of December. As I, we sent our doctor's notes, he's advised Sorry. us not to work. Your, your, your doctor advised you not to read the Auditor General's report. <laughs> no, he said he'd advised me not to work to lower my stress. Okay, sir, in, in, in the couple hours you spent preparing, uh, you didn't read the Auditor General's report, and you came here and you told us you disputed its findings based on what Christian Firth had told you. Yes. Um, Mr. Anthony, I, I don't believe you, first of all, uh, but secondly, I have a hard time making sense of your motivations. Uh, Mr. Firth is under a serious cloud of suspicion, uh, suspicion involving events that you claim you don't have any knowledge about. Um, with that in mind, are you committed to standing by Mr. Firth and believing everything he tells you, regardless of what this investigation reveals? I've known Christian Firth since 2007. We've been a business partner since 2015. He's honest, trustworthy, hardworking man, and a parent. I have no doubt. He's reading. That's, uh, yeah, it's just, that's a re like a prepared statement. He's reading. Is his lawyer like standing there with a piece of paper? And, like, here, read this. <laughs> it's chalk. It's like a chalkboard. <laughs> or it's written in crayon. Oh, my goodness. This is just so... This is messed this up. This is cringe. Like... Oh, come on! <laughs> Thanks for being with me tonight, Jim. Oh, like, come on. <laughs> at least, at least make it seem like you're not reading it. Christian Firth is a honest man. He is a good father and he is the best person and most dishonest. Oh, crap. I, I wrote that wrong. <laughs> honest person that I have ever worked with in my life. These are my statements and not somebody else's. Thank you, Mr. Chair. 
Wow, I don't know if we've ever seen a witness do that in committee. Crazy. That he's done nothing wrong. I'm confident all independent investigation <laughs> will establish that. It is so terrible. So were, were you reading what you just said, sir? <laughs> or oh, I wish I could high five that man. Emotional damage. <laughs> wow. Oh. <laughs> like I don't. I ha- neither of us has thrown our glasses, but I think our brains are on the ceiling because our minds are blown. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so apparently the apparently it gets better. So I'm gonna have to like better than that. I'll try not to stop as much, everybody. I'm sorry, but it's just like blowing my mind. Well, we'll get a few super chats before we continue. Thank you to Daniel with the 279 super chat. It says this is the part I saw this morning, and thank you to Gokudani with a ten dollar super chat. It says he could fix the homeless problem. There's enough space between his ears to rent out. Amazing. And thank you to Leo or- Orchard. It says his words, the AG report destroyed his life, but didn't bother reading it. And thank you, Canadian Commander. Commando. Commando. Okay, thank you. Uh, with a $2 super chat, it says, here go the glasses. Not yet. <sighs> Mines are blown, but no glass has been thrown. Here we go. Speaking from the heart. Speaking from the heart. He just lied again? Um, sir... Uh, um, <laughs> I don't even know what to say. This, this is so ridiculous, sir. Like, is it not obviously ridiculous to you? you you've come before this committee. <laughs> you, 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 you've been summoned here. You would have been ar- arrested by the sergeant at arms if you hadn't shown up. And, and you're telling us you did two hours of prep. You didn't read the Auditor General's report. And you're committed to standing by everything Mr. Firth tells you, even though you had allegedly no involvement in the events that could lead to criminal charges. <laughs> Genuous is getting red now. Oh. Like, <laughs> I don't think he can believe it either. Oh, Pierre, I need you. W-T-F. Jeez. Like, <laughs> oh, like, even Garnet's glasses are going to come off at this point. Like this, is this what is happening? <laughs> Yeah, what is happening? Uh, uh, Mr. Anthony, um, one, one other question in the, in the time I have left. Uh, what is your uh, relationship with David Yao? Do you know him? Uh, do you have conversations with him? I've never had a conversation with him. I don't know him. Okay. Uh, you are supposed to manage security processes for the company. Have you ever, in the course of your time working for Christian Firth, uh, provided any pushback or raised concerns about things he suggested in terms of, of contracts, contractors, processes, uh, or have you or have you not? I have not. So you, you affirm, uh, approve, rubber stamp uh, the things that Mr. Firth uh, provides you? I, I don't approve things that he I got I'm not sure where you what what the question this is, is this is a, this is the, a strange partnership uh yeah that is our time Mr. Jonas okay. Mr. Sousa go ahead please sir <laughs> thank you chair um Mr. Anthony you're a 50 50 percent owner of this company correct you yes made that, they made that clear and you share 50 50 percent of the profits generated from the contracts as well correct yes and in those uh, those costs associated with a particular contract, if Mr. Firth has sourced the contract to arrive, can does he charge himself a, a, a salary or a fee prior to sharing the profits with you? No. So when he does a twenty million dollar deal or a ten million dollar deal, and you do a one million dollar deal. You share on the $20 million deal equally with Mr. Firth, and he shares in the million-dollar deal that you do on your own? Is that how it works? Yes, in most cases. So you're benefiting quite a bit from this association with Mr. Firth. If he's doing all the work, if he's if he's providing and sourcing the contracts, if he's the one that's having deliberations, and you're saying that, hey, I'm just the guy that stamps and does the fingerprinting. Is that what you're saying? Uh, what the hell is going on? 
What is going on when every single MP from every single party is coming after you? That's what's going on. Even the liberals are now like, I'm done. I'm coming after you. I was going to say, the liberals are actually asking good questions today. Like... What is going on? Because the problem is, is the liberals cannot be associated with this level of stupidity and corruption and obvious perjury. They they cannot be associated with this. Okay, can I put on my conspiracy hat? Please. Here's my conspiracy hat, everybody. What if... This is pure speculation. This is just a wild theory. No proof of any kind. No proof. The liberals have been getting killed by the Arrive Can scandal, right? For sure. What if they actually spoke to Christian Firth and Darren Anthony and influenced how they're answering questions at committee so that they can actually look like they're taking a stand against it which helps them in the public perception. That's my conspiracy hat. I don't know how plausible that is. It's not plausible at all. It's just, this is so strange, I'm considering the absurd. I think what's more likely is that they're getting so murdered in the polls, they have to show that they are trying to do something and that they don't want to be associated with these guys. And the noose might be tightening around the liberals' necks. So they want to try to distance themselves from this and stop throwing softball questions. And I suspect if Jagmeet does not call a vote of non-confidence, I suspect the liberals are going to be the ones to pull the plug. Well, because this keeps going down and down and down and down the drain. and There's no recovery from this. No, no. Because remember, the liberals and the NDP, they're the people that kept voting to keep the giving these guys money. And this is, this is going to be just thrown in their face until there's an election, whether it's tomorrow or next year. And it gets worse and worse and worse and worse. Anyway. Thank you to Chris Ackright with a 699 Super Chat. It says $2.5 million does not justify a teleprompter. Nope. And thank you to Richard Hefner with a $2 super chat. It says, you ever want to smack someone? Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, thank you to Brenda Weeb with the 279 super chat. It says, another one goes down. Is it to protect the libs? Could be. Thank you to Sean Siddiqui with a 1399 super chat. It says, is Firth holding standing in front of him, running his thumb across his neck or something? It's either that or his intelligence is somewhere between a rock and a lizard. Oh, don't insult lizards. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, $5 super chat from Marilyn Northrup. Thank you very much. It says, you need a Sergeant Schultz clip. I know nothing. I hear nothing. I see nothing. And thank you to Al Pipke with a $5 super chat. It says, to think I grew up believing Pinocchio was a fictional character. So good, I can't see who's pulling the strings. And thank you to Leo Orchard with a $5 super chat. It says, and believe it or not, it gets even worse. You know, you guys keep telling us that, and I, I can't believe We never believe how. it, and then it does. And then <laughs> I it still does. can't believe how. Well, Brock's coming up again. Oh, is he? Okay, now maybe I can believe how. Thank you to Daniel with the 699 Super Chat. It says, Christian Firth and Darren Anthony remind me of the Spike and the Bulldog, or Spike the Bulldog and Chester the Terrier animated cartoon characters. Again, I am dating myself. Yeah, I, I don't believe I'm familiar with those ones. Um, Osiris Gaming with a $2 Super Chat. It says, I swear we fell into an alternate reality somehow. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Like, this is... It's bizarre. Yeah, this is the craziest committee I've seen yeah, in ever. a very long time. If uh, ev Yeah, ever. if not ever. And uh, Canadian Commando with a $2 super chat. It says, Idiocracy was apparently a documentary. <laughs> <laughs> well Thank played. You. Well played. Okay. Let's do it. Souza, you're asking good questions. Let's follow this. You're saying he, he actually sources a lot. He sources a lot of revenue for you. Yeah, I, and I focus on my work. So... How much of the work, the GC strategies, how much of the profits are generated by you? Um, I don't have those numbers in front of me. Well, let's assume you got two and a half. Well, I mean, 
Mr. Firth explained yesterday that he got $2.5 million as the net result of his engagement with the RiveCan over those two-year periods. Uh, presumably, did you get a $2.5 billion net return on your contracts? Um, I don't have the, I don't have those numbers in front of me right now. You don't know if you're equally contributing to the generation of profits for the company. Are you equally, are you and him equal partners in terms of revenue generation? Yes. All right. So all the work that Mr. Firth did for GC strategies in this period of time, you did equally the same amount in that profit. Not well. I I don't know. I don't know that that answer. Um, were you around? What were you? When were you at Veritech? How long were you at Veritech? When did you start? I was started there in two thousand and five, and I left in two thousand and ten. So what happened at Veritech around that time? Are you aware of the bid rigging allegations and issues that occurred? Yes. And what happened with Veritech? Did they? Were they charged? Did they plead guilty? What, explain to us what took place. Um, I am not sure. I believe I, I had left the company. I, I don't know what happened with that whole scenario. But you were there and you weren't aware? How well, I, was, I, I, I was there as a recruiter. I was not involved in any of those accounts that were in question at that time. I was, I was not investigated. And you have not been in touch with any investigators as a result of this ongoing issue. The last six months, has, has any investigators I, called you? No. Um, explain to me, uh, there's a lot of deliberations, a lot of considerations given to the value of your contribution and that of Mr. Firth to the program. In, this, in essence, why do you exist? Why is it that the that we need you and Mr. Firth to provide services? Like you're not doing the service, right? You're providing the, the, the skill sets, you're assembling teams of people. Explain to us why that's why is that worth twenty percent or ten percent? Um we were asked we were asked to do to do a job for a price and we did it. And you bid on that price? Like you bid on, like I, I, I understand this one may not have been bid. How did this one come to be? How, well, how did the, these last two or three that are in question? On my contracts? No, on my last can. On these, on these with a rev can. How did they, how did those contracts come oh, to I don't be? know. I have no knowledge of that. <laughs> how do your contracts <laughs> come to be? My contracts, they come out through RFP. All of my contracts that I've been awarded have been competed. So an RFP would come out on the street. I would read it, see if we have a partner network or resources that would be interested in bidding on the opportunity, speak with those resources, clarifying if our corporate requirements meets that of that department. We put together a bid, submit, and if we were awarded the contract, we execute on the contract. Thank you very much. That is our time. Mr. Bear, please go ahead, sir. Wow. When, when Sousa is asking you questions about a Rive can, and they're actually decent questions, you know you're in trouble. Boots41, member for one month with a member comment. It says, I have a feeling that an election will be called between April 1st and April 21st before the electoral boundary changes. I think you're right. I have a feeling um, it's either going to be called, like right after the budget, they present the budget on April the 16th, and they have until April 21st. That's the last day that they can call an election and still use the old writing boundaries. Um, if they call it April 21st to the end of the term, or sorry, Pardon me. If they call it April 22nd to the end of the term, then it's the new writing boundary changes. And as we've discussed previously, it looks a lot worse for the Liberals and NDP just on how the map's drawn. Um, and we have a uh, $2.79 super chat from 
uh, I believe uh, QMJ, and says, forget about election uh, not happening. Well, I guess we'll it's see. It's still possible. Like, it's always possible in a minority government that they could just call it. So Historically speaking, uh, if you look at the average length of a minority government, it only lasts 2.3 years, and we're past that now. Um, and strategically, just strategy, never mind who's in power, just strategy, it is in the NDP's best interest. And the other thing that I find interesting about the NDP is they have now stopped talking about pharmacare, and they are now talking about um, the what's what's their new initiative they started you know saying that the the liberals need to put in this week the the school lunches uh, that I, one yeah there's that and then there's like renters protection or or something like that so um, their big thing their big you know uh, <laughs> initiative that they thought that they were gonna have all these people jumping on board with their support completely didn't it, it actually bombed because the media has torn it apart. Uh, as well as us in terms of the pharmacare non-bill. So I think they're, they're, they're just going to be looking at these polls for the next couple of weeks. And if it doesn't get any better, I they have to pull the plug. Strategically, they have to. They may not, which would be a bad move. But strategically, I would be advising them jumping up and down. It's only going to get worse. You better go now because... Never mind about the fact that you are going to lose even more and more support after April 1, because guess what? You voted for the carbon tax. So everything gets worse for Canada after April 1. So you either pull the plug and you go with what you have, which is not a great situation, or you wait until after the boundary change, and then you have an even worse situation. And the longer time goes on, the more unaffordable Canadians are going to find Canada both with the carbon tax and with all of these maturing mortgages, which there are also signs all over the financial industry that everyone is jumping up and down about the warnings of all of these mortgages going to default, which then puts us in danger of a recession. There's all of these bad things that are coming down the road in the next year that are going to have a disastrous impact on the public perception of both the NDP and the Liberals. So strategically, they have to go now. Now, they might be stupid and they not do it. They may be stupid, yeah. But... All signs point to yes, I um, think. From a strategy perspective. So we will see. We will see. Uh, let's see. We have a member comment from uh, North49RC, a uh, member for one month. My theory is they are all crooks, but it was Mindone who deleted files and emails to frame GC strategies. Possible. It's, it's, po it's definitely probable. And Glenn Stewart with a two dollars super chat. Uh, are we watching a new sitcom? <laughs> it feels like it. Like again, I never thought I would get. I don't want to call it entertainment, but that I would be interested, and that my interest would be held for so long watching parliamentary committee. <laughs> yeah. Well, we have two thousand people watching for three hours on a weeknight about uh, a government committee. So that just goes to show the level of concern and public interest in politics right now. So kudos to everybody who's sticking with us through this. And Carol, uh, Carol Rome with a $5 super chat. Anthony's strategy, if he doesn't prep, he has no answers and doesn't get hounded like Firth did yesterday. Well, that might be a strategy, but he ends up looking like a complete fool. Uh, Gokodani with a $10 super chat. Thank you very much. It says, not encouraging violence, but I totally understand why Darth Vader felt the need to force choke problem employees and idiots. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> uh, and Excalibur with a... The Excalibur 45 with a 279 Super Chat. Uh, his job was writing forged resumes. Yeah, seems like it. Masturbated with $20 Super Chat. Can't wait for Brock to go for Anthony's jugular. <laughs> oh, I can't wait either. You guys have been hyping it up. <laughs> Thank you to John Gauthier with a $2 Super Chat. It says, and on today's episode of Northern Perspective <laughs> yeah, with a laughy, <laughs> laughy face. Pretty much, yeah. That's all we've been doing is giggling. But it, we can't believe it. <laughs> Uh, thank you to Jim Devlin with a $2 super chat. It says, have a good night, y'all, with a heart. And thank you to Bev Thiessen with a $2 super chat. It says, bring out your dead, bring out your dead. Oh, yeah. well done. Yeah, he's getting annihilated. <laughs> well done. Another uh, quote from uh, Mighty Python. Oh, that's right. Yes. Bring out your dead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not quite dead. Here we go. Numbered company. What is it? <laughs> Pardon me? You have a numbered company. Uh, what is the company?
I don't see how that's relevant. <gasps> what? You don't get to make that decision. They ask you a question and you answer it. Wow. And if I'm not mistaken, a numbered company is uh, a corporation that it doesn't have a name. It has a number Correct. instead. Correct. Correct. And it's kind of to like hide it almost, isn't it? This is not going to go well. No. no this... you, you don't get to decide what questions to answer. Trish Pro with a $2 super chat. Fox, are you entertained? Always. <laughs> <laughs> but especially now. Well, first of all, it's relevant because I've asked. It's uh, also important that we have an understanding of your business dealings. And um, I've asked the question and you're obligated to answer it. The numbered company, sir. Uh, Trish. Shut up and answer. The number company owns my shares. The number company owns your shares. Is it registered in Canada? Yes. And is Christian Firth a part of this numbered company? No. And the shares that you're referring to are in GC Strategies? Yes. Does it hold shares in any <laughs> other company? No. Do you have any business abroad? And do you own any interests in companies uh, outside of Canada? No. Do you know if Christian Firth has any businesses outside of Canada? N no. The smile's gone. By yeah, the way. yeah. This is serious stuff. I I think, and I'm I don't know a lot about corporations and businesses and stuff. But I think this is possibly how they're like laundering the money. Right, because yeah. if GC Strategies makes say twenty million in government contracts, and then his numbered company owns shares, then they that numbered company gets the profit, right? Yeah, and I think then he pays kind of less tax on it. So, um, but uh, anyway, it's going to be interesting to see where this goes. But he. He, he's not so smug now when he's answering these questions. And he looked up at his lawyer. So. Several times. Alta Pisa with a 2799 Super Chat. Watching this guy is like watching a box of styrofoam talk. I've watched this twice today, and he's just as stupid both times. I love him saying what an amazing person Firth is, reading it from a script. Yeah, 100%. Uh, Marco Perza with a $5 Super Chat. Fox, did you not hear? Interest rates are at a historical lows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I've got Barnaby behind the scenes telling me, because Barnaby is a business guy. Fox is not a business guy. <laughs> um, he says that um, this is normal and accountants will recommend that you do this. A holding company that holds your shares. It's a tax thing. It's totally legal. It only sounds illegal. Yeah. And so that's that's what I was saying. So you, you pay less taxes if, you're, if your holding company is getting it, right? So... Um, Anyhow, uh, da, 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 Louise A. King with a $2 super chat. I want to spit in Anthony's general direction. Gotta love these Monty Python fans. And 5W with a $2 super chat. Note for the future, Darren, don't drop the soap. <laughs> now, there's some good life advice that he should probably follow. And Jacob uh, Kudrich with a $2 super chat. These super chats are hella annoying every two seconds. And you just contributed to it. Congratulations. Uh, and here we go. No businesses. You, sorry, you don't know or he doesn't have them? I don't know. So you're the chief security officer of GC Strategies. Can you testify that the ArriveCan app was totally secure and the data that was collected was totally secure? I have no knowledge of that. Are you the chief security officer for GC Strategies? Yes. Did GC Strategies work on ArriveCan? Yes. So the Auditor General says that your company was paid nearly $20 million on a $60 million uh, project and you don't have any knowledge of it as one of two people in a two-person company and your role specifically is chief security officer of GC Strategies and your testimony is that you have no knowledge of the security of the data that was collected and if it was secure. The security data that I collected is secure. 
<laughs> what what is this the data that you collected? Oh what? my! What? Jeez! Oh, oh my goodness, folks! Oh my goodness! By the way, um, in in the real world. Somebody doing his job gets paid probably between forty and fifty grand a year. Just saying, that not and you know, you're twenty not, million from the government, and you're not a chief security officer. You're <laughs> like a secu- It's like an HR analyst. That's what that's what they would get paid. A, a junior HR person. That's that's what they would do. And this guy got paid one point two five million. Wow, that's our our tax dollars at work. Rabbi says with a five dollar super chat, if the number company has shares, it could be paid dividends. Yep, uh, and that's what we're talking about here. Yeah, and Barnaby's been explaining that in the chat to everybody. So thank you very much, Barnaby, because again, I'm not a business yeah. person. So and uh, Dudu with a two dollar super chat. Wow, he is just staring daggers at Barrett. Yeah, he is because Barrett is not putting up with this crap and uh, making him again. He's he's forcing him into absurdity on the hill that he's chosen to die on. But, you know, you've, you're the one that went there, so that's where they're going. These uh, people's personal information and could be passports. So are you, talking about the u- are you talking about the users of the app or are you talking about contractors on the app? Contractors on the app. But you have no idea about where Arrive Can Data was stored as the chief security officer for GC Strategies. Absolutely not. Did do you know if anyone outside of Canada worked on the app? I have no knowledge of that. Why? Why would you not? You're the you're the guy that does. That's their personal information. Why would you not know? And it looks like Barrett is about to unload a whole keg of whoop ass on him right here. I hope he does. Would you say you did more or less work than Christian Firth on Arrive Can? Less. So he said he did um, about 10 hours a week. So you did less than 10 hours a week for one and a quarter million dollars? <laughs> I work, I work full time. I don't work by the hour. So on this contract, we, your partner said that he worked uh, 40 hours per month to earn two and a half million dollars, of which you say you share 50% of that. So the question is about work on this app. I'm I'm looking to find out. You said you worked less than Mr. Firth did, than Mr. Firth, Mr. Firth did, and he said he worked for what works out to uh, less than ten hours a week. See, here's the problem. This this look on on Darren Anthony's face right now, he is he is very irritated, and he's very irritated because Barrett has managed to corner him, and. You know what? 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 Darren Anthony has tried to avoid this whole time is sound bites, and he's done a very poor job at trying to do that. But that's what he's been trying to do, and this is where he is completely cornered because he made the mistake of uh, of answering a certainty to the question from Mister Barrett of, "Did you work more or less than Christian Firth on a ride can?" And he said less. Now he's screwed. Because they had a absolute figure from Christian Firth yesterday of 10 hours a week or 40 hours a month. He said 40 hours a month, which works out to 10 hours a week. So now Barrett is going down that road. Again, this is the absurdity. And saying, okay, so you, you worked less than 10 hours a week. Um, so, and, and you got paid 1.25 million of this. And then Darren Anthony's retort is, well, you know, I, I work full time. Doesn't matter. We don't care. Less than 10 hours a week is not full time. And it's the value per hour and what you got paid per hour on this contract. Don't get irritated with with the questions because you guys set up this business model that way. 
So you're going to get pinned to the wall on the dollar per hour very shortly. And you're going to look like a complete shyster and thief when it comes to how Canadian taxpayer dollars are spent. Again, Canadians are living in tents. Canadians are living in cars. Canadians can't afford food. Canadians are making the choice, do I heat my home? Do I pay my rent? Or do I buy food? And these guys are sitting up there, oh, we're going through mental stress. Shut up. Nobody cares. You guys are the ones that got paid millions of dollars for doing jack. And you want some public sympathy? Why don't you go and, and rock up to Justin Trudeau's house and see if he'll give you any? So that's accurate for you as well on Arrive King. I did not work on the app. Yeah, there seems to be a lot of that with your company that, that you gentlemen were paid, uh, you, you, you were made millionaires by, uh, uh, by Canadians and you uh, didn't do any actual work on Justin Trudeau's $60 million Arrive scam. And you've come here today and you have no answers. You expressed that you were concerned about the impact this has on your other business. I think that the people um, who've contracted you to do, bus to do business would be uh, concerned as well after seeing um, your inability to actually articulate what it is that your company does and how you exercise your role as chief security officer. What is it that you do and we didn't get an answer to that. Thank you to, uh, sorry, I can't see the name. Just give me one second. Uh, what happens Canada uh, with a $5 super chat? It says, does Darren think that if he keeps digging, he will find a way out of the hole? Like somebody said earlier, dig up, stupid, dig up. <laughs> And uh, thank you to Leo Orchard with a $5 super chat. It says, John Cleese would be proud. Just wait till he starts doing a funny walk. <laughs> yeah, that's silly walk. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, I love you, Money Python fans. Well played, guys. Thanks, Mr. Barrett. Mr. Zwari, please, for five. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Anthony, I'm going to go back to um, uh, three periods, 2005 to 2010, oh, 2010 to 2015. And the, uh, the, the found passion at that time, 2015 to present. What kind of trend did you see between 2005 oh, um, to 2010 and then 2010 to 15 and 15 forward around out, uh, requests for either outsourcing or staff augmentation as it relates to the government? These, okay. So, you know, the liberals, they, they, they ask good questions. And then now they're they're retreating back to to partisan questions. And what do I mean by partisan questions? They're trying to get them to say, "Oh, I saw a clear trend that outsourcing for the government of Canada was was increasing." And what they want to try and put put together with that narrative is the Harper government fired a whole bunch of IT people, and uh, and that created a trend that resulted in GC strategies coming into existence in the first place. This is the narrative that the Liberals are trying to build. That, And this is how they're going to try to pin this all on the Harper government and the Conservatives, a.k.a. Pierre Polyev. It's like, well, it's not our fault. Harper created the conditions for GC strategies to be corrupt in the first place, so it's not the Liberals' fault at all. That's what they're trying to do here. The problem is, is Darren Anthony is giving the finger to all of them. So he's actually not even giving them this narrative here at all. Uh, we're getting a lot of requests to skip. So I'm guessing that means nothing significant happened. Well, based on what he's talking about, I, I don't necessarily disagree. So, um, so let's do that one moment. Oops, <laughs> there we go. As an owner of a business, which have proven to be successful, I would strongly suggest you be prepared for the next round of questions that I'm gonna ask, to be able to talk about those trends and what you've made an observation. Thank and you, I sir. I think my time is up. Yes, it is. Thanks, Mrs. Uh, Thank McNulla, you, sir. please. That is so funny. Yeah, that, that was absolutely worth skipping because he started with trends and then he probably bumbled his way, didn't land the plane, and then he ended with, I strongly <laughs> say you actually look at those trends. 
So. Alrighty. Anyway, we're going to get to some super chats to get us up to date. Thank you to Gokudani with the $10 super chat. It says sympathy can be found in the dictionary somewhere between uh, sheet and syphilis. <laughs> I'm sure you guys can read what it actually says. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Jarja with the $2 super chat. Thank you very much. It says, Darren, I'm going to reach China any minute now. Yeah, he's like trying to dig through the Earth's crust all the way to the other side. I, I don't get it. <laughs> uh, the Excalibur 45 with a 279 super chat. It says he looks like he needs a cigarette lit by $1,000 bill. They don't make those anymore. I don't think they even um, will honor those anymore. Because I recall a few years ago hearing on the news that they said, you know, if you have any and you want to cash them in, bring them to the bank before such and such date. Because after that, we're not honoring them anymore. I could be wrong, but. Robbie Sadie's with a $5 super chat. It says, wait a sec, isn't one of them supposed to be native to get contracts that way too? No. Um, so that's only Dalian. Uh, GC Strategies does not classify themselves as an indigenous organization. And Richard Hepner with a $5 super chat. It says, everything was fine until 2015. What happened in 2015? Do you guys know? I'm not so sure. Uh, what the hell is going on? Justin Trudeau. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and Canadian Commando with a $20 super chat. I talked with Jag Meat at an event, and he is very warm and articulate, just clueless. Ronald Reagan said it. Uh, the trouble with our liberal friends is not that they're ignorant. It's just that they... Uh, they know so much that isn't so. <laughs> Interesting. I've always wondered that because, like, you kind of wonder, you know, are they malicious or are they just going to do what they're going to do and, and they're just kind of clueless about it? So that's yeah. that's interesting. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much, Chair. I'll ask you a simple question concerning Arrive Khan. Do you know how much you earned the amount that entered any of your bank accounts? Do you know any of these amounts? I'm not even asking about the amounts. I want to know if you know how much you earned. I don't have those numbers. Wow. Vous êtes un chef d'entreprise. You are a company owner. You have contracts multiple times, notably with the government of Canada, but you do not know how much you make in life. And you have two other numbered companies. Well, things seem to be going very well for you. I would like to be so rich that I don't have to bother to know how much I earn and how much I spend. I'm sorry, but it's really incredible. You talked about opportunities starting in 2012, 2015. Is it consistent with cutbacks that were made to technology workers at that time? Dismissals of staff? Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure. It could be. Okay, so it should be one of the as it must be some of the chance experiences we've seen in this committee for a while now, for some weeks. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Before the purchase of Corridor, you were an employee, a salaried worker at Veritag, and later with iForce Consulting. Am I correct? That's correct. Come on. How do you go from salaried worker to company owner and someone who receives a security clearance? Que vous avez utilisé... Did you have to use another company as a donor and then delete the other company? How does it work, the process? Well, we were basically, how we started the companies, we were entrepreneurs when we decided to take a a risk and invest our money to purchase Cordell. Okay. That's I'm sorry Merci. that's our time. Mr. Backrack, please go ahead, sir. Mr. Anthony, uh, PSPC suspended your company's security clearance. I imagine as chief security officer this was uh news <laughs> that uh gave you quite a bit of concern. 
Is that correct? <laughs> no, actually, we canceled Mr. First security clearance the day before. He was a key security officer for the company, and we canceled his clearance. Then we were aware that we were going to lose our docu our uh, security clearance for the company. What? Okay, wait. I'm, I'm a little bit confused. So am Mr. I. Mr. Firth was the chief security officer? No, he was... He was he's a key security officer. He, he's a key a key security officer and you're yeah. the chief security officer. Yeah. And because you knew you were going to lose your company's security clearance, he preemptively canceled his security clearance? No, we well we do we weren't able to do business with the government of Canada. We were suspended right. from everything. So our company's security clearance was irrelevant. We would never be using it. So we deleted his clearance, thus knowing we're going to lose our clearance. Does the company have security clearance in addition to Mr. Firth's own personal security clearance? No, I have my. I still have my personal security clearance. I, so when, I believe. When, so when PSPC suspended your company's security clearance, what did that mean? What were they suspending? They were suspending us from allowing any, allowing us to get anybody a security clearance or hold anyone's security clearance. And so, so PSPC it, has suspended uh, Mr. Firth's security clearance? Yes, his, his, his security clearance has been terminated. And yours has not? Not to my knowledge. Uh, what? This guy, this guy's security clearance is still active. That is concerning. A problem. Uh, there's some explanations that need to be had from PSPC. Holy moly. Um, yeah, that's a problem. That's a big problem. And uh, I imagine either the, the conservatives are going to get into it now or <laughs> it's going to happen next week when they're back in session. Thank you to Val Montreal, Quebec with a $20 super chat. It says, more importantly, Mr. Trudeau and his gang hired these people and paid them our tax dollars. This is the takeaway. Good job, MP, reporting this way. Education is everything. Thank you very Thank much, you. Val. And thank you to Huntsford with a $5 super chat. It says, I just saw that part I was talking about when he was reading about Firth, or filth, and then in brackets, Firth, being an honest and trustworthy man. Malarkey, oi. <laughs> and thank you, Warren Higginson, with a $2 super chat. It says, keep up the good work, folks. We will until Trudeau finds us and drags us off kicking and screaming. Uh, thank you, Mr. Excuses, with a $2 super chat. It says, to have so much money, you don't need to track it. Yeah, I think that's the gross part about all this. Yeah, isn't that nice? And that's what Miss Vignola had said. Okay, interesting. Um, and as Chief Security Officer, did the loss of Mr. Firth's security clearance um, concern you? No, we were aware that this was going to happen. We actioned it. And did you communicate with PSPC about the the revocation of security clearance? Yes. Does the fact that you still have your own personal security clearance mean that you can still uh, approve the, the clearance of resources that work on projects? No. Why not? Because we don't have any government contracts. We don't have any government contractors for me to get into the system, I will not be able to process anyone's clearance. I don't have access. Thank you. Did PSPC and okay? Thank yes, you, Mr. Sorry, Chair. sir. You'll have a couple more rounds. So, uh, Mr. Brock, go ahead, sir. Thank you, Chair. Um, Mr. Anthony, does it concern you that uh, Mr. Firth actively engaged in, in acts of uh, fraud and forgery in relation to the? Uh, Butler contract, and furthermore, his evidence at committee that it was a standard practice of his to take a look at various resumes with other contracts and to match it to the requirements set out uh, by the government. 
um, does it that that it might, that to me as a former prosecutor just spells out another word for criminality. So on a personal level, sir, does it concern you that your partner has been engaged in criminal acts? Yes or no? I don't think he did. I don't think he did. Oh boy. <laughs> Never mind that he admitted to it in committee. But, you know, I don't think he did. I don't think he did. Canadian Commander with a $2 super chat. Days and Confused was not just a movie. That's right. That's parliamentary uh, committee. And Ravi Sadie with a $5 super chat. And with that one statement, klaxons start blaring. Whole breach, whole breach in the background <laughs> explosions. Before we get back to it, I wanted to read these comments from Craig Robertson because I thought they were really cool and it was uh, it goes to what I was talking about earlier. It says, as of January 1st, 2021, the $1, $2, $25, $500 and $1,000 bills from every Bank of Canada series are no longer legal tender. Um, you, uh, what's it say here? You can, this does not mean that the notes are worthless. The bank will continue to honor them at face value. So there you go. That's good to know. Very cool. So all you hiding $1,000 bills out there, <laughs> uh, make sure you You can still you bring them. it to the bank, allegedly. Yeah. So you are defending his actions, is that correct? Yeah, I don't think he did. Are you defending his actions, sir? Are you saying that yes. what he did, what he did with respect to Bottler, changing their resumes without their consent and doing that same sort of practice with other contractors was entirely acceptable by your standards? I don't think he did that. He, he said he did. He admitted to it. So that's fine. You're defending him. I, that's, I, I have you on record. That's, <laughs> that's an important uh, point that perhaps you want to discuss uh, with your counsel. Now, you'll have to forgive me as well, sir, that in your opening statement, you, you, wanted, you wanted the public to, to, uh, to have some sympathy uh, for the situation that your company, the Government of Canada Strategies, is now facing in terms of the financial hardship. But according to uh, public accounts data, Government of Canada Strategies has received $59 million in federal funding from all federal departments combined since 2017. So if we take your commission value of 15% at the lowest all the way to 30% at the highest, that means you and Firth, since 2017, over the last seven years, received $8.85 million at the 15% mark, or upwards to $17.7 .7 million at the highest mark. That's roughly $4.4 million to you, sir, upwards to $8.8 .8 .8 Now, in light of Justin Trudeau's just very poor fiscal policies that he's adopted since 2015 and the affordability crisis that Canadians are facing, you will probably understand that no Canadian has any sympathy for you, sir, in the situation you're in. Because that amount of money uh, is something that's almost akin to winning the taxpayer lottery. So I'm not asking for a response, but I want you to consider that, sir, that you have been rewarded very handsomely at the backs of Canadian taxpayers. Now, last uh, line of questioning. What did you actually do in the grand total of two hours to prepare for this meeting, aside from talking to Christian Firth? What did you do? What did you review? I, I've re reviewed my own contracts. Did you think that someone in, at this committee would be asking about your contracts with the government of Canada? That's that's all. That's all I know. That's all you know. You don't know anything about your partner's involvement with the government of Canada and all the allegations against him. You didn't think there'd be other yeah. questions related to your involvement with Christian Firth. Well, I figured there would be questions related to Christian Firth. There were, I was surprised. Did Christian, was Firth, did Christian in, Firth tell you what to say today, sir? Not at all. Do you always believe what Mr. Firth says to you? I trust him, yes. Do you always believe what he says to you? I trust him, yes. Yes. 
So if he said to you, and I guess he did say to you, I disagree with the Auditor General's report, you took that at face value without conducting any independent investigation on your own. I often tell my 14-year-old twin daughters, if you're going to do what, what friends say you're going to do, are you going to jump off a bridge if a friend tells you to do that as well? Do you ever push back on your, on your uh, business acquaintance or business partner, Mr. Firth? Have I ever pushed back? Yes. Yes. Okay. And in this particular case, you didn't think a very explosive document by an auditor who's been in the business of auditing for decades, and you have no auditing experience, do you? No. No. And Firth has no auditing experience. Right? I don't think so, no. So if, if, if Firth says, we disagree with everything that she has said, you will always accept that at face value. Well, he has knowledge. He has knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Block. <laughs> uh, Mr. Sousa, go ahead, and then we will uh, do our second suspension. Go ahead. He has oh, knowledge. Oh, man. He has knowledge. He has knowledge. <laughs> he has the power. You know what I have? Emotional damage. I, I'm dumber after watching this. Yeah. Um, I think my brain is like oozing out my ears. Uh, it's just, it's something else. <laughs> Thank you to Leo Orchard with a $2 super chat. It says, watching this, I think I've been spiked with acid. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Definitely. Um, Robbie Sadies with a $5 super chat. It says, I mean, heck, with money like that, they may almost be able to buy a house in Toronto or Vancouver. Getting there. Almost. Getting there. JD with a $2 super chat. It says, Dunning-Kruger effect. Liberal clowns don't know. Yeah. They think they know more than they actually do. Uh, and Canadian Commando with a $2 super chat. It says, Brock asked our favorite question. What do you do? What would you say you do here? And we have uh, Clown P1SS with a $2.79 super chat. Uh, hi, Baba. Uh, P.S. Thanks, NP, for spreading the truth. You are uh, so welcome. And hi, Baba, as well. Jackson with a $5 super chat uh, saying he reviewed his own contracts for an... Uh, for being called in to talk and arrive can't is like me studying English for my math test. Yeah, I, th yeah. that exact same analogy, uh, not English for math, but that same thing was going through my head. Like, it's just ridiculous. And Ryan Paplinski, good to see you around with $2.79 Super Chat. He who has knowledge comes great responsibility. That's right. <laughs> Mr. Sousa. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And um, I have only a few questions, and I'm going to move my motion as well prior to our suspension, if that's okay. Um, Mr. Anthony, I think reference was just made about the name of your company. It is it called the Government of Canada or is it called GC Strategies? It's GC Strategies Incorporated. So there is not called the Government of Canada Incorporated. You're, you're not operating under that name. You're operating under GC. No, we, Mr. First, we yes, it, go ahead. We operate under GC Strategies. That's our legal name. Okay. And uh, we understand yesterday from Mr. Firth. You picked GC Strategies for what reason, as, as the initials? We, we just thought that it would be it would be good to call it in, we would say GC Strategies means okay. Government of Canada. Yeah. Fair enough. And when you purchased uh, Cordell at the time, you were both equal partners in the investment, equal amounts of money were contributed? Yes, and we had an, another business partner at the time. Have you owned any other companies prior to GC Strategies? No. This is your first four-way as, as an entrepreneur and, 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 and a shareholder? Yes. Sousa trying really hard to try and get him or, or pin him to owning Cordell Systems. Remember, this was, this was a big talking point in Parliament. But sorry, Sousa. Didn't buy it until... End of 2015, which means they didn't put through these contracts and they're not linked with the Liberal government. Like, Liberals just, they take a loss on absolutely every scandal that they have. 
And thank you to Brian Blingy Choi with uh, 10 gifted Northern Perspective memberships. Thank you, thank very you much, so Brian. much. If you receive one, please say thank you. Uh, some of my colleagues have questioned you and pressed you pretty hard on the future duty, duty that you have as part of a director and an owner of this company. I would uh, suggest with your counsel, look into some of the requirements and the corporate nature that you rep you represent and have quite a bit of uh, exposure here. And, uh, and, and I, so it's, we all find it rather odd that you don't have knowledge or, or an understanding of these consequences. And are you telling us that you and Mr. Firth don't discuss the legal implications or the, the, um, uh, the accusations being made against you by, the, by this investigation? No, we discuss files, contracts, contracts generally, but not specifics. Okay. Um, Mr. Chair, if I could move a, the motion that's been tabled already. Thanks very much. Uh, Mr. Anthony, th I apologize for the delay. Thank you. Um, we are now back to uh, Mr. Bertold for five minutes. Mr. Bertold, go ahead, sir. So between the time that Mr. Suda introduced a motion to right here, an hour went by. Just so everybody knows, an hour went by in committee with no questions yeah. being being posed to Mr. Anthony. And, and the, Cypher cut it out. <laughs> yeah. So and the motion was around um, the um, uh, the president of the Treasury Board coming to committee, and there's there's some amendments. I didn't watch all of it, but the Liberals lost the vote <laughs> again. Good. So, that means the NDP is voting with the Conservatives. Yeah, and the Bloc. Good. And the block. And it came to a tie, and Kelly broke the tie. So there you go. Um, so, it, and it, it's it's not really a relevant motion. It was intended to waste time. So there you go. Uh, so that was motion number one. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Chair. Mr. Chair, is my sound okay? Mr. Anthony, you and your partner, Mr. Firth, found a perfect recipe to enrich yourself on the back of Canadians without employees and all that, and without the, laxis and without the laxism of the Liberal government asking for accountability. Mr. Chair, could these MP, please repeat. The interpreter missed the last part of the question. Uh, your question, Mr. Bateau? All the question. Please, just start from the beginning. I'll reset your time. Okay, merci. Monsieur Anthony, vous et... Mr. Anthony, you and your partner, Mr. Firth, seems to have found the perfect recipe to enrich yourself on the backs of Canadians without technical knowledge, without employees, without Mr. Trudeau's and with the laxism of the Liberal government opening you the doors, is there anyone from the Liberal government who questioned your business model since 2015? No. I see. It's not very surprising. According to the figures we have, Mr. Anthony, even the Auditor General cannot confirm the figures because of the lack of details on the invoices, the fact that Mr. Firth is calling everyone talking about these liars. Your numbered company and yourself could have earned millions of dollars since 2015 in contracts. Is that correct? Um, I'm not sure what you're what you're referencing. Combien d'argent avez-vous? How much money did you earn from federal contracts since 2015? You and your numbered company. I don't know. I, I don't have that information with me right now. Of course. Monsieur, Monsieur, Monsieur Anthony. Mr. Anthony, an ordinary Canadian earning, having millions of dollars entering into an account can't see whether it's $4 million, $5 million, 500000 It seems to be pennies for you, but for many people, lining up on the food banks is a lot of money. So the figures we are giving you between 
four and five million, is that the profit that you personally earned from the contracts? Again, I don't have those numbers in front of me. Vous pouvez pas dire. You cannot say, Mr. Anthony, you cannot tell us whether you earned more than $4 million from federal contracts since 2015. You can't tell us that. No. Plus de 5 million? More than 5 million? I, I don't have those numbers in front of me. Plus de 6 million? 6 million? <laughs> I don't have those numbers in front of me. Plus de 7 million, Monsieur Anthony? More than 7 million? I don't have those numbers in front of me. Get them, Bertolt. Plus de 8 million, Monsieur Anthony? More than 8 million, Mr. Anthony? Get them. I don't have any numbers in front of me. Donc, vous ne pouvez même pas nous dire. You even tell us how many million dollars you earned from Canadian tax payers since you set up your company. Mr. Anthony... You were very greedy. I believe your business model has shown this to us very clearly. You came up with a formula and you decided... Get him, Bertolt. You made a lot of money and you claim not to have read the EG's report. You should be ashamed, Mr. Anthony. Yeah, you should. Good. Go get him. Are you ashamed? that you are not able to tell Canadians how much you earned from Canadian taxpayers using your business model that involves making a lot of money without any technical knowledge? No. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Président. Thank you very much, Chair. Nothing else for this witness. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bertold. Uh, next, I have... Uh some from the Liberals, but I don't have the speaking order. Sorry, who's uh, who's up next with the... Oh, Mr. Baines, do you have a point of order, sir? It's my turn, I believe. Are you going to go? Perfect. Thanks very much. Go ahead, Mr. Baines. You know, um, it's it's a pity that... Um, I'm not going to say it's a pity Mr. Bertol doesn't speak English. Um, I think it's just a pity that we don't speak French. Yeah. Part, because um, he's he's a very... He's a very intense and, and very intelligent MP. Um, seen him in committee uh, many times. He's usually on PROC a lot. Um, so we saw him uh, on the uh, Standing Committee for, for House Procedures. They're the ones that do a lot of the investigation into the foreign interference, and uh, especially when it came to China. So we did a lot with that last year. And he was on the committee a lot. And he's, he's really good. But um, he um, he's... I, I like what he was saying there. He was just he, he he wasn't letting Anthony off the hook, and he's like, you know, Anthony knows darn well exactly you know in the ballpark of how much he's made. He just doesn't want to say, and why doesn't he want to say? Because it becomes a clip against him. So, yeah. Um, anyhow, so. And thank you to Vesper Digital with a five dollar super chat. It says, "Why does it feel like the mob sent Fredo Corleone to testify at this committee instead of Clemenza or Tessio or, uh, for Pete's sake, Mamma Mia?" So does that mean when he gets back to Firth, first is going to give him a hug and say, "You broke my heart, Fredo." Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, I think we're 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 almost done, so we're going to get through Baines. Don't worry. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, uh... I'm just going to try to add some clarity to what I feel like we've learned over the last little while here. Never mind. <laughs> oh, come on! <laughs> I don't know why I don't know why I was doing that when I go. <laughs> The work of GC Strategies on Arrive Can, was it uh, supervised, verified, and approved by the competent authorities? And I'm talking about the Border Services. Uh, I don't have that information. Vous personnel. You personally, 
be it the border services as part of the ArriveCan contract, who supervised you from C the CBSC? Who asked you questions? I have, I have no information on that. Donc vous ne savez pas. So you do not know whether anyone asked you questions about your work on ArriveCan? Very well. Okay, merci. Pers donc personne. So no one questioned you. Yes, I'm asking questions to try to understand how GC strategies work, how numbered companies function, the numbered companies that you own. But I'm trying to understand as well how we lose control of management of public funds and taxes of Canadians. And where do those taxes go? The money that was received from GC Strategies was some of it, did some of it go to subcontractors and did some of it go into your pockets? Well, the one that you pocketed, is it still in Canada? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what you're referring to with with which one have you pocketed. I think that's the, the profit. interpreters. I'm talking about there. the profits that you earned. Are they still in Canada or were they sent elsewhere to some uh, foreign companies or foreign trust? Is that money still in Canada? Everything is still in Canada. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Backrack for two and a half, please, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Anthony, how did you respond to the news that the government had banned your company from all government contracts? I was very upset. And what steps did you take after receiving that news? We've taken no steps so far. Did you meet with your business partner to discuss the uh, the suspension of government contracts i i let i made him aware that we were no longer able to do business with the federal government so this news this news was communicated to you and then you communicated it to mr firth yes i received the email and that was prior to having your security status uh suspended yes the notification came in on february the 14th and I believe our security was suspended on March the 1st. And after uh, having your contract suspended, did you meet with uh, Mr. Firth to determine the best course of action for your company? Uh, we, we had discussed what our steps would be going forward, but we didn't really get into detail as we, we have been focusing on these committed meetings. And did you communicate with the government after learning that uh, that your contracts had been suspended? Uh, I communicated with the departments that have reached out to me to send us documents to sign off on contracts that were existing to let our resources know they were no longer able to work. And what was the substance of those conversations with the departments that you communicated with? Uh, they would just say they have signed a, a amendment to a contract that the contract was on hold or terminated. And did you or Mr. Firth appeal in any way this decision by the government to suspend all your contracts? Both you and Mr. Firth uh, have asserted to the committee that you've done nothing wrong and all of a sudden the government takes away all your business. Did, did you appeal that decision? Not yet. Thanks. Do you intend to? Thanks, Mr. Chair. Sorry, go ahead and answer, Mr. Anthony. Maybe. Thanks. Maybe. Ladies and gentlemen, this... <laughs> What a horrible witness. They know they're guilty as all can be. They know that they've been screwing Canadians. 
if you if you seriously believe you've done nothing wrong, the first thing you're going to do is appeal that decision, and you're going to go and get in front of a camera and say, this is outrageous, we've done nothing wrong, and get me before committee because I want to make sure that our story is told and that... Um, because this is my integrity. This is the, the integrity of the business we've been building for the last 10 years. Like, that's what would happen. And you're asked, are you going to appeal? Well, maybe. They, they know they're <laughs> caught. They're, they know they're screwed. So at this point, they're just like, oh, well, come and get us. That's, that's basically what they're doing. And they don't even have the sense to leave the country and go and live in an, a, a non-extraditable country. Well, there's not many. There's like North Korea, China, Russia. Well, Trudeau's buddies are over in China. Why not yeah, go there? Yeah, that's true. Uh, Mr. Sousa now, please, for five minutes, sir. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Anthony, did you, um, did you know or have you ever met Mr. McDonald or Mr. Otano? No, I have not. You've never spoken to them? Nope. They never participate in any meetings. That that's the case, okay? Um, and uh, do you know the principles of Butler AI? Did you ever meet with them? No, I've never met with them. The only interaction I've had with Butler has been security. So, what did you do in regards to providing clearance of security, or what did you do in that case with those two individuals? And and those those two individuals reached out to me asking how to get security cleared with the federal government. I gave them the instructions around they needed to get fingerprinting. Uh, I found a place in Montreal that's where they were residing at the time uh, that does federal fingerprinting. Brought, got them through that process. They sent me back their documents with the DCN numbers on it. They sent me their date of births and their citizenships. I submitted that through the oldest portal and they they were able to get security cleared. So he's not telling like talking about the timeline. That took them a long, long, long time to get security clearance. So they were working on this stuff for a long time because they kept going to DC strategy because they were responsible for getting their security clearance. And they never got it. Not for a long, long time. So, yeah. Not surprised he's not talking about the lag time there. And Rabu says with a $5 super chat. Well, if true, if the money is still in Canada, it may still be recoverable, at least in part. Yeah, it's definitely it's possible. possible. But the question is, is Trudeau going to bother trying to get it? And thank you to Daphne Devine with a $10 super chat. It says, try and get yourself some good Z's tonight. You too. You deserve it more than some people on the stand. <laughs> yes, thank you. Our little boy had us up quite early this morning, so we're both uh, pretty pretty tired. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been pretty hard. But the good news is the stream's almost over. We're not going to 2 o'clock this time, everybody. So. so you facilitated their engagement. Uh, now, they didn't have a contract. Is that correct? Like, why did they need security clearance? What exactly was taking place? I, I have no knowledge of that. So who instructed you to provide the requirements for fingerprinting and, and security engagement? Like, how did that come to be? I, be I believe they, they reached out to me to say they needed the security clearance. So the two principals reached out to you. So this would have been Mr. Mir Maurf and, and Rakita Dud, Dud? They yes. contact they so they reached out to you. I believe so, yes. And their request was, hey, we need clearance in order to engage with the federal government. Yes. Without a contract. Now without a contract. At that time you were able to do that. You were to able to the, the, to start the process. You can if you have a, if you're submitting a bid on an RFP that you're not awarded, there's a, there could be a number or an identifier associated with that. But prior, prior to a few years ago, you would be able to submit a name for security clearance and say that they were just a consultant and they would be able to get a clearance. 
And Mr. Firth had been in contact with them as well, concurrent with you, with their engagement? Uh, I don't have any knowledge of his contact with Butler. Okay, so Butler is the one that contacted you to get uh, matters for their security. And no contract was evident. They were proposing, they were going through a preliminary study, pilot, whatever it was called. And that's why they needed this clearance, which you facilitated them to get. Yeah, I would assume so. Um, and you being an owner of DC Strategies, a major owner, half 50% half owner, didn't have a contract with the government regarding their engagement either. Is that correct? That's correct. How would you know that? You have no knowledge about anything. Yes, yeah, so he's not supposed to know that, is he? You have no knowledge about uh, Christian First Contracts. How would you know that? A little bird told him. Very convenient. <laughs> Very convenient. I imagine Genesis is going to pick up on that one. Uh, Revy saves with a $5 super chat. I mean, I believe in the flying spaghetti monster, so... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's more believable than Don't than we all? That. Than some of these? Yeah. Some of these? Yeah. So, TC Strategy doesn't have a contract. Bottler doesn't have a contract. So, you're facilitating security clearance for them to potentially get a contract. Uh, yes. <clears throat> and there was no RFP. There was no request for contracts because there was nothing being proposed at that point. There was no RFP, no. How do you, you know? Are you aware of their accusations against GC strategies and uh, how they operated relative to their conduct? I have no knowledge of that. They've disputed that GC strategies misrepresented them in regards to their resumes or their qualifications when they dealt with, I believe, Dalian. Who ultimately got the contract? Are you aware of that? No, I'm not aware of that. Are you aware of Dalian's engagement in subcontracting? Well, I guess did Dalian subcontract GC Strategies? I have no knowledge of that. Did Dalian provide funds to GC Strategies? I have no knowledge of that. Do you know if Bottler got paid for their services through GC Strategies or through Dalian? I have no knowledge of that. Gotta love it. You're part owner of a company, but you have no idea. Hundreds of thousands of dollars being funneled through your bank accounts. You don't pay attention. Well, and when, was it Yao and, and Wood were testifying? Um, you could tell that uh, it was Wood, wasn't it? Was the puppet CEO? Yes. Well, yeah. You, you could tell he legit had no idea what was going on, and it was Yao pulling all the strings. Um, but... This guy does not seem to be a puppet CEO. Thank you, Mr. Souza. Uh, colleagues, I apologize. I skipped over the uh, conservative round. So we will all go to, I was so anxious to hear from Mr. Souza. <laughs> caught me uh, off guard too. Yeah, sorry. So we're gonna go to Mr. Brock and then we'll go to uh, Mr. Genuis and Mr. Uh, Shawari to finish. And then uh, the block NDP. Go ahead, Mr. Brock. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Mr. Anthony, do you currently have or have you had in the past any relatives working with uh, the government of Canada? No. All right. Uh, you'd agree with me, sir. I'm going to ask you a number of uh, rapid fire questions. You'd agree with me, sir, that Christian Firth really is the sole public face of government of Canada strategies? No. Point of order, Mr. Chair. Um, That's not yeah, the Mr. actual Susan. name. I don't believe it's called Government of Canada GC Strategies. Order. I don't think that's the name no. of the company. No, we've, already, a, we've already resolved yeah, that. Yeah, it's not a point of order, uh, Mr. Sousa, but thanks. <laughs> Mr. Brock, continue, sir. Um, are you a public face? Uh, I might be now. <laughs> you probably are. Yeah, uh, that, that's a that's a good observation. <laughs> but you'd agree with me that uh, Mr. Firth was front and center during the rollout of the Arrive Scam app over the last several years. It wasn't you? It was Mr. Firth, correct? He he was the face for Arrive Scam. Yes, yes, yes. He was the one that held all the relationships with the bureaucrats 
and government officials such as deputy ministers and ministers, not you, correct? I don't have any knowledge of that. He was the one that was whining and dining uh, potential contractors with government officials. That wasn't you, correct? That wasn't me. No. Literally everything to do with the Arrive Can scam was flowed directly through Christian Firth. It had no DNA of you on it. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I was not involved. Right. So we heard yesterday from Christian Firth that uh, not only yesterday, but in previous testimony, that he's quite proud of the Arrive Can scam. Are you equally proud? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm proud of the work that, that we were able to deliver. Are you proud of the end result? Which end result are you referring to? The end result that resulted in um, extremely long delays at the borders, chaos and confusion at airports, the faulty, glitchy part of the app that resulted in the illegal detention of 10,000 Canadians. Are you proud of those facts, Mr. Anthony? I don't know about that. Yes or no? I have no, I have no knowledge of that. Come on, Mr. Anthony. You read papers. You watch the news. Were you living under a rock for the last three years? <laughs> Did you not experience the frustrations that millions of Canadians had at airports, border crossings? You want this committee to believe this lie that you have no knowledge of those basic facts? Come on. No one believes you. I certainly don't believe you. Do you think Canadians got value for their money for the Arrive Can scam? We were asked to do a job for a price and we did it. A price that was originally estimated at $80,000 that was multiplied 750 times to around $60 million. Is that sir value for the money? I have no knowledge of that. Of course you don't. You were completely unable to answer relevant questions from numerous members of this committee. Will you ultimately answer questions that are put to you by the RCMP? If the RCMP reaches out, I will cooperate with them. Thank you. Those are my questions, Chair. <laughs> you got to love that. Come on. Like, just dang. A $2 super chat. It says, Souza is just as baffled as the rest of us. Yes, he is. And thank you, Diane Sylvain, with the $10 super chat. It says, thank you so much for the stream, Cypher and Fox. Are you still considering moving to Alberta? Uh, Mountain Standard Time Zone is just another perk. Love, love to you both. You can answer. I have no knowledge of that. LOL. So um, last time somebody suggested we move to Alberta, my mom was on the stream and she messaged me afterwards and she's like, Fox, you're not allowed to move to Alberta. You're not allowed to take my baby away, meaning our son. So her grandbaby. So I guess uh, overruled by mom. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. Um, let's see. Um, so you got Diane's uh, Dana Wick with a $5 super chat. How to play dumb. 101. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that this is the way how to play dumb. No, he's doing it very poorly. <laughs> yeah. And Kitty Nukes with a $5 super chat. Maybe he and Mr. Firth were hypnotized. They don't remember a thing. That's Seems right. like it. And thank you to JD with a $10 super chat. It says conservative MPs need to reject the April 1st raise. It's common sense in this cost of living crisis. How can we take them seriously if they don't live by example? Those are excellent points. Um, however, with the parliamentary raises for the MPs, back in 2005, they enacted legislation that was 
um, it was meant to take the politics essentially out of MP raises so that they weren't voting for their own raises every year. Um, so what it is, is it's like a, a standing order, I guess, that every year their raise is calculated with, um, I, I can't quite remember the the factors that they use but these these set factors and that's their raise and they don't have to vote for it or against it it just happens now when harper was in power what they did was he um created legislation that overrode that for three years um and then once the financial crisis was ended they took that that legislation that they had created away and it defaulted back to the 2005 legislation so what would have to happen is that the government would have to introduce a bill to um, stop their raises. But I really doubt the Liberals are going to do that. And they can't stop it right now is the issue. Um, it's going to show up in their bank accounts whether they want it or not. Um, I suppose what they could do, maybe what the party leader could encourage them to do, is um, get take that raise and give it to charity. Um, but there's no way of actually stopping it from getting into their bank accounts without the government initiating something. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, and we have Glenn Stewart with a $2 super chat. We are due our taxes back. Well, I don't think you'll get any argument here. And Brenda Weeb with a 279 super chat. Thank you, NP. I love your commentary. Well, thank you it's for being pleasure. here. It's our pleasure. Thank you for being here. Okay, let's see what's left of Mr. Jenis. Thank you. Uh, we now go to back to regular order. Mr. Uh, Genuous, please, for five. And then Mr. Joari, and then Mrs. Vignola, and Mr. Backrack. Go ahead, Mr. Genuous. Uh, thank you, Chair, uh, Mr. Mr. Anthony. Uh, Bottler executives have uh, testified that Christian Firth, your partner, bragged about having dirt on his friends. Uh, who were senior government uh, contracting officials. Uh, has Mr. Firth ever uh, told you that he has dirt on anyone? No. Does Mr. Firth have any dirt on you? No. And you're nonetheless uh, prepared to continue to defend him in spite of everything you've heard today? Yes. Uh, do you intend to read the Auditor General's report after this meeting's over? No. Wow. Why not? Is it, the damage has already been done for me. It, it does not affect me. Wow. Sir, you, you, you began your opening statement by talking about how much it affected you. Anyway, we, we, we've been over this ground uh, before. Uh, Mr. Anthony, uh, one of my uh, colleagues had been asking you about uh, meetings with uh, Mr. Firth. Uh, did, you, did you discuss your testimony today with Mr. Firth? No. Did he participate in any uh, of your prepar preparatory activities? No. Okay. Uh, you, you did say, and the record will show that in response to questions from Mr. Backrack, uh, you said you, you were, um, uh, in terms of, of time spent uh, on responding to the, the suspension, you said uh, you hadn't discussed it because you were focused on these committee meetings. Did you not say that? I did say that. Okay, so, so you, you, you just admitted to me that in your discussions with Mr. Firth, you were focused on these committee meetings. At the same time, 30 seconds no, previously. No, no that's, not, that's not what I meant when I said that. Well, what, what, I, what did, I, I, had, I had no discussions with Mr. Firth about this committee meeting. When Mr. Yeah, but, you, but, you were, but you were nonetheless focused on the committee meetings and your discussions with him. No, I did not say that. All right, sir. I think the I think the record will show that you you said many things that you didn't say, uh, and uh, I hope you uh, uh, 
do actually read the Auditor General's report, which you no doubt have already read. Um, Mr. Chair, I, uh, in light of the previous discussions about security and privacy issues uh, raised by Mr. Uh, Anthony's testimony, I'd let now like to move a motion. The motion is that the committee report to the House that in light of the evidence of Darren Anthony, Chief Security Officer for GC Strategies, that he did not vet or review, arrive can subcontracts awarded by GC Strategies. And given that the Auditor General found, quote, some resources that were involved in the security assessments were not identified in the task authorizations and did not have security clearance uh, as submitted by GC Strategies, and that the Canadian Border Services Agency, quote, was unable to provide any uh, the supporting documentation to confirm that work related to the security assessments were performed by four of the five resources listed, end quote. The committee call upon the Privacy Commissioner to, to conduct an investigation of the ArriveCAN app, including the work of all contractors and subcontractors, and determine whether the privacy and personal information of Canadians was adequately protected, and with a view to presenting a special report uh, to Parliament. Uh, that motion uh, has been sent, I believe has been uh, distributed. And uh, I think it's uh, it's fairly self-explanatory, uh, Chair. The testimony today. Let, let me uh, just raises... interrupt you quickly. Sure. It has been sent to everyone in both languages to their P9s. Go ahead, Mr. Jenna. Sorry. Thank you, thank you, Chair. I I think it's it's clear from the testimony today uh, that the person responsible for uh, security uh, at GC Strategies. Uh, was not attending to and is not able to answer questions about uh, about key measures that should have been in place to protect the privacy and security of Canadians. Uh, therefore, I, I uh, believe this motion will and should uh, receive the uh, the quick support of this committee, uh, and we can ask the Privacy Commissioner to undertake uh, this important work. Um, there, there have been a number of different investigations in relation to the ArriveCAN uh, app, of course, uh, but this is a, a unique element. Uh, the implications for the privacy and security of Canadians' data. Uh, so many Canadians uh, put their personal data into this app expecting that it would be protected, uh, and I think we now need to ask the Privacy Commissioner to investigate the serious uh, problems that we've heard about today. Okay, so that was the last motion, and um, they basically want the Privacy Commissioner to get involved now. And this is the problem. When you say, all you say is, oh, you know, I, I'm, I'm just the Chief Security Officer. That's all I do. And then you basically say, you did, you did nothing to oversee the actual security of anything related to the ArriveCAN app, which, you know, you could argue, is it his responsibility or not? Um, doesn't matter, because... That motion went through, it was debated for a long time, and again, the Liberals ended up getting the short end of the stick on there because the NDP and the Bloc voted for it. So, it is what it is. So the NDP and, and, and the Liberals continue to be at odds as it relates to this scandal. Interesting, as we're approaching April and the budget vote that they're, uh, that they're taking that position, so. Uh, next for cup member uh, for mo one month is there any chance his metal <laughs> metal health is all uh, is really bad that his doctor's note is real um, well here's the thing is it stressful that your company is the most famous company in Canada right now for all the wrong reasons probably are they getting hate mail from a bunch of people probably is it stressful that you're probably going to end up going to jail over this? Probably. So I don't doubt that they're under a lot of stress. I just don't care. Yeah, like, I mean, maybe Diane can tell us in the chat, but if a prisoner, for example, is really stressed about being in jail, does that mean they're going to defer the trial? I don't know. Or I, that they won't bring them to trial at all? I, I doubt it. I doubt it. Yeah. Uh, Roy was saved with a five dollars super chat and yeah. Pinky Moslayer. Nope. Back up. I oh. have uh, I have ah, the text geez. for Roy Sadie's super chat. It says the best way to end the stream would be the RCMP coming in and frog marching him out. Yes, hundred percent. And JD with a two dollars super chat. Hey Fox, thank you for the info on the MP raises. Hey, you're welcome. I um, I again, we just want to share the truth. Like, are the optics bad right now? Yes, they're really, really bad. But again, like they can't do anything without the government putting forth a vote to stop it. 
So that money is going to show up in their bank accounts, whether they like it or not. It's up to the individuals to see what they're going to do with it. Yeah. And um, uh, Pinky Most Layer, member for uh, six months. Help, I'm stuck two hours behind in Lag City. YouTube has some great optimization with their live chat. Just let me turn off <laughs> the chat, YouTube. Yeah. And uh, Mr. Sunday uh, with a $5 super chat. Thank you very much. Thank you, Cypher and Fox, for taking up the job of informing to many uh, Canadians. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Honestly, uh, it's it's you guys that make the community. It, it really, really is. And you may get tired of us uh, saying that, but we truly believe that. But that's the that. truth, too. And we're going to keep saying it. Yeah, we, we truly do believe that. Like, this channel is literally nothing without the people who watch it. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We cannot thank you enough. Um but onwards and upwards, uh, that's that's the plan. So um, so tomorrow we'll be on uh, Clyde Do Something stream. Uh, he usually starts his stream at around 9.30. Uh, typically we end up on at 10.30, I think. Eastern so, time. Eastern yeah. time. So, uh, so if you end up watching that, we'll be there. Um, we're pretty tired. We're hoping to get a video out at some point tomorrow. So we'll see if we can make that happen. Uh, if not, we'll be back to our... Kind of our regular schedule on uh, on Saturday, uh, so we'll be probably dropping a video at some point there. And we're hoping tomorrow you'll be able to find out who that third MP is. Yeah, so um, we will be dropping a post um, in the morning, and um, you'll get to see who it is. So uh, it's going to be ex an exciting day and an exciting week next week for for all of us, uh, this entire community at Northern Perspectives. So, but we'll have more updates as we get more certainty. And as soon as we have completed recording, we are going to be announcing uh, the planned um, the drop planned date. premiere yeah. drop date. So, um, so we will see. We will see. But thank you, everybody, to all of your contributions, to, uh, whether they are a chat or whether it's a like, a share, or monetary. Thank you very much for that. It is very much appreciated uh, by, uh, by Fox and I. I'm just going to take one more quick look to make sure that we haven't missed anything here, which I don't believe we have. I think we're all up to date. So um, thank you, everybody. Uh, thanks for sticking with us. Almost uh, 1,800 people the whole time. And as we say, we will see you in the comments. And have a good night, everybody. Good night, everyone.